Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Good night. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. My name is James Reyes. I am the box office artist. And we're going to have some fun today. We are going to have some fun today. And let me just make sure I'm on, which I am. Welcome, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see here. Did I turn this on properly? Let me just make sure I'm on. <laughs> let me make sure I'm on. Did I make this public? Yeah, it should be public. Okay, good. I think we're good to go. I think we're good to Oh, there you go. Everyone's uh, dropping in now into the chat. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. We're going to draw some Warhammer today, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to try to f see if I can finish this piece today, too. We'll, we'll see if we can go uh, front to back and uh, finish this piece, okay? But you guys know, I like to yap. I like to talk, okay? I like to talk. So hello, everyone who's uh, coming into the chat. I like to yap, and I like to talk. So if you would like to ask me a question today, the best place to do that is not the chat, okay? Though it's nice that you guys are there talking away. Uh, I do glance over it at a time, but if you really, really, really want to ask me a question uh, today that I will answer, uh, head over, and I'm, we're going to go right now to my channel. Whoops. It's display capture there. Hold on, hold on, guys. My, uh, oh, that's a black screen, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, let's see here. There it is. There it is. There it is. Just need a little uh, click there. All right. Go to my channel here. Go to the community tab, which is right here. Go to the community tab. And here, this is where you're going to ask your question, okay? Right here. Click on here. We already have a quite a few questions here. Quite a few questions here. And that's where we will answer your questions for today. Okay. Also, okay, let me just minimize that. All right. Let me just minimize that. Also, if, if you are on your phone, because we all know YouTube kind of, uh, YouTube, you cut, YouTube kind of changed things, uh, with their app, of course, right? So again, if you're on your phone here, uh, go to my channel, head over to community, to the community tab, and then click here. This is the, the top post here. That is where you're going to ask your questions. Okay. Not not uh in the chat okay though i will answer the chat once we start getting to the end of the drawing so let's get started let's not waste any time i know before before a while ago i would um when i used to stream a lot it would take me literally half an hour before i started drawing <laughs> sometimes but uh live and learn live and learn so i do want to start drawing this and we are going to draw uh, an Emperor versus Horus piece. By the way, have you seen have you seen that trailer, that Horus trailer that came out earlier this year? It's pretty pretty awesome, pretty awesome, I must say, I must say. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. So hello everybody in the chat, and uh, let's see here. The Cake Lord says I am a Warhammer and Marvel fan, so that'll be fun. There you go. <laughs> so hello everyone in the chat. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. It's Saturday. So I'm going to draw for the next three and a half hours, I would like to say. Three and a half. Yeah, but roughly around three and a half. Uh, I do have a very hard out at 745 uh, today because I have other responsibilities. But uh, we are going to go ahead and start drawing this. Now, um, let's go ahead and start with the first question, okay? We're going to start with the first question here while I talk. All right. Uh... Let's see here. Adrian says, uh, what Warhammer, Warhammer faction do you use? Okay. I'll be honest. I'm not actually too familiar with the problem. I'm not, I'm not that familiar. But the reason I'm drawing this is because of you guys today. A lot of you have commented saying you always want me to draw a Warhammer piece. I did do one before. Uh, someone actually commissioned me uh, a few years ago. Uh, commissioned me. And I actually think it was the Emperor. Uh, you get... Uh, he got me to draw the emperor as a commission and it was a lot of fun i i highly enjoyed uh that particular that particular uh drawing there right so it's a lot of fun so but uh the reason i'm doing this today is because of you guys because of you guys and uh, hopefully this week we're gonna have a lot of fun drawings selected by you or fun um fun subject matters uh, that uh, hopefully you will enjoy. Hello, Mario. How you doing, buddy? 
I want to say hi to Mario. Mario is our moderator for today. Thank you once again for always being here in my streams, my friend. Thank you so much. You're the best. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next question here. Uh, let, hold on. Let's. Uh, I went by the newest. That was the newest question, Adrian. Let's go to the oldest. Okay, let's from Pogs Art. Pogs Art. You know, the thing with Pogs. You guys even know what Pogs are? You guys know what po a Pog is? Let me let me ask the chat quickly. Can I ask the chat quickly? You guys know what a Pog is? You have any idea what know what a Pog is? Not a Porg. We know a Porg is in Star Wars, right? That, that creature in Star Wars. If you ask me, the best thing to come out of The Last Jedi was the Porgs. <laughs> But can I ask you guys, do you know what pogs are? You guys know what pogs are? Are you old enough to know what a pog is? Pogs, back when I was a kid, back when I was a kid, a pog was, um, uh, it was like these uh, bottle cap shaped um, collectible, uh, look, even caps, it's, we'll, we'll call it caps, right? And they, sometimes they would have your favorite characters on it. So it was the size of a bottle cap. It's not a bottle cap, maybe a tiny bit better, like the size of a coin. And uh, when I was younger, when I was a kid, uh, people would kind of, um, we'll say a game, but it's it was kind of like gambling. It was kind of like gambling back in the day. And uh, people would play for their pogs, right? There was a game they would play, and the winner would get all the pogs. Winner would get all the pogs. And uh, it started to get banned in schools. It was starting to get banned in <laughs> because all these kids were losing their pogs, and then they were getting so you know they were start crying in school, so they they banned it because you know because kids were were gam essentially gambling in school. So so it was they were fun collectibles, but uh, it led to that. So. But anyway, I, off a tangent, he goes. Pogs art says, "I want to learn your style. Is it okay? No, it's not. You're not allowed to copy my style." <laughs> of course it's okay of course it's okay i learned how to draw from copying my favorite artists that's how i learned okay but again uh, and i mentioned this i think in every single stream uh this week it's one thing to copy to learn it's another to copy somebody's artwork and then claim it as your own as we say so the best thing to do is uh you know copy them if you want to post online make sure you credit that particular artist, not even, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to me. And to be honest, I don't care that much. Uh, but, uh, but uh, copy that, uh, you know, credit that particular artist if you want to put it online. But the more important thing is, if you're going to copy my style, okay, and especially today, today's a good day to do this. If you're going to, and a lot of you guys, if you're going to try to draw the same thing that I'm drawing, you're going to try to draw the same thing I'm drawing. Under, don't just copy my lines, okay? Don't just copy my lines. Because it's one thing to copy the lines. It's another to understand why I'm drawing the lines the way they are, okay? It's it's another to understand why I'm drawing, why I'm putting lines in a certain place, why do I sketch it out like this. I'll try to understand those things, okay? Why am I adding shadows in certain places? You could give them more of a... I'm going to give Horace more of a Hulk style face here. You know, uh, the Hulk style face, you might notice the nose is up higher. When you, Whenever you do a Hulk style face, for example, the nose is up higher. So understand, for example, why I make the nose up higher. Because that's really how, that's really how um, uh, the Hulk looks. His nose is like closer to his eyes and he has bigger upper lip. I still need to invest in a racer, guys. I still need to invest in a racer. Still need to invest. But, um, but yeah, go for it, my friend. Go for it. Learn. But then, you know, because eventually, once you start copying your favorite artists, you'll start to develop uh, what you like about other artists. You'll start to develop. You know, this is an instance I think I drew his head too big. I think I, I drew his head too big. I, think I drew his head just a bit too big I, I love how he has that wolf head on the side there that's actually pretty cool i'm actually thinking i should make his head smaller see this is, these are things that are actually easier in the in the computer when you when you uh 
when you draw things digitally, it's, all I got to do is cut this out and go whoop, shrink it like so, like so. But uh, let me get my very expensive eraser out, guys. There you go. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so I realize his head's too big. You know, one thing that makes a, a character look massive is the size of the head. Really, it really does. So I think I, I, I think even like half the size. See, I make it smaller. Look how, how much more massive he looks. How much more massive he looks. The, the head is much, much smaller, right? So. So I'm going to go ahead and, and draw this head. Again, very, again, I'm giving a very, this guy, this dude's massive, right? I want to give him a very Hulk. Hulkish look to him. We're doing Marvel style here, right? Very Hulkish look to them. And you guys know, I love, I love me some Hulk. I love me drawing some Hulk here. Look at that. He's angry. He's angry. Look at that. He's angry. All right. <laughs> Whitey, he's welcome back. Says, man, that guy look buff. He do. He do look buff. He do look buff there. Okay, next question. From uh, my friend, Danielle Bell Muffin. Out of all this art style challenges you did, which one's your favorite? Uh, of course, more, most detailed, of course. <laughs> That's always fun. Uh, you, know, you know, ones I like is when I, when I try to emulate my, my favorite artists. Okay, because, you know, I, I do the ones, you know, whenever I'm doing those things, of course, a lot of it's like a view grab. I'm trying to get views. So a lot of it is uh, me, you know, you know, me trying to, you know, doing like things like Simpsons style and, you know, Family Guy style. The thing with those styles is one, uh, one reason I did do those because they're super easy to do. Like it literally takes you only minutes because of the amount of work that really needs to be in there. Uh, it, it will take longer if you don't understand the style that well, for sure. It definitely will take a bit longer. But uh, those, those are e uh, easier styles. But I, I enjoy the ones where I'm, like, for example, when I tried to draw, uh, like Jim Lee would draw it. When I tried to draw how Alex Wa Ross would draw it when I was doing the Batman one. So th th those are fun for me because, um, you know. It's styles that, uh, you know, that I used to learn how to draw myself. And also to try to see the differences in how they, they drew things as opposed to how I would draw things. So, because, you know, when I was growing up, you, you, you always wondered how would my favorite artist, how would he draw certain things? So instead of waiting for them to draw it, I'll just do it myself. I'll see how they draw it by, by me trying to do it myself. So. Let's see here. Uh, Justin says, Abomination Buff Warhammer. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Next question. Next question. Once again, guys, if you want to ask a question, go ahead and do that in the community tab. All right? That's where you do it. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Abalash Abraham says, Can you do a live stream of Marvel DC villains along with anti-heroes like Black Adam Werewolf? I, should, I assume you mean Werewolf by Night, I assume. Um maybe maybe one day um you know I'm, I'm trying to take a little break from drawing just straight up uh marvel and dc heroes for now like you know, you know i've been doing a lot of that for the past past year or so like this this time around I'm, I'm really concentrating on trying to draw things that i haven't really drawn before like i do plan maybe to do like a giant B dc piece one of these days uh maybe maybe Maybe. But not uh, not in the media future. Like this this uh, era. What am I doing? I gave him a fist. He has the claw hands. What am I doing? He's got claw hands. Oh my gosh. He's got claw hands. And, and the good thing about uh, a lot of you guys being big fans of the of the property, uh, let me know when something's off. Okay. Let me know when something's off. I want to stay true here to uh, what this is. Okay. You know, looking at this right now, the way the way this character is, it actually reminds me of was it a Jim Lee character or a Todd McFarlane character? 
Um, his name's uh, Over Overkill, if I'm not mistaken. Overkill. Is that who I'm thinking of? I th there's a character called Overkill. That this actually reminds me of. It, it's not a one to one thing. It's not a one to one thing. But now, as I'm drawing him, yeah, uh, it's it's the vibe I'm getting. I'm getting that vibe of that particular character called Overkill. Uh, Mario says it's the habit of James drawing the clenched fist. That's right. <laughs> That's what I draw, my friend. That's what I draw. See, even Marvel style, I'm gonna draw the, I gotta draw the wolf's arm buff here. How about that, man? Buff wolf arm. <laughs> Let's see if I can do the wolf justice here on the top. But anyway. So in terms of uh, Marvel DC, maybe I bought a book recently uh, that is, I bought a book recently that has um, like 200, 200 DC characters. And I, you know, I was going to do that uh, sooner than later, but I, I might hold off on that. Maybe we won't do that till the next year. Uh, when, I, when I was in California recently, I, I did get to go to the Warner Brothers tour. Uh, with the family it was, it was a lot of fun and uh it was okay you know you know we're traveling in the sets and i'm like yeah 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 it's nice sets oh look that's where they shot friends great but then we got to the dc area and then they had all the costumes for the movies and there that's when i started having fun that's that's literally when i started having fun when we went to the dc area of the uh, uh the warner brothers tour and i i highly enjoyed that once we got there i was like yes yes i'm enjoying now I am enjoying. So. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Next question. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is, and this is a great question. I, I saw this question earlier, and um, actually, yeah, this might be one of those where I'm dro I'm talking for the whole stream. Okay, uh, but this question is from Alaria TCG. James, hey James, curious for your brutal. I want me to be brutal here. Brutal, non-sugar-coated answer. Okay, non-sugar-coated answer. Are there many? Op there are many op optimistic views and glamorous stories for someone. Sh why someone should be an artist, but what is the cold hard truth of what it's really like? Okay, what should one expect the real cost to be if they decide to go down this route? I love this question. It's not, I know it's not a terrible choice, but it is one with sacrifices that may, some may not be willing to make it. Uh, absolutely love hearing your expert uh, perspective. Thank you, Alaria. And I love, love, love the question. A lot of times uh, when you hear about profession, yes, uh, you hear the good side. You see the most famous people in that particular job. And I'm going to extend this too, not just to not just to uh art but to youtube as well okay because a lot of you you guys want to be youtubers okay not you just don't want to be artists you want to be art youtubers and who could blame you who could blame you when you see uh like my my mentor jazza going and, and buying this gigantic building having all the staff members doing what he loves you know uh, absolutely when you see a guy like uh, ZHC making millions, millions upon millions of dollars, right? Doing art. Or making, uh, doing, doing art videos. Art, well, art related videos anyway. How, how could you not want to be in, that, in this, that position, right? Or you see your favorite comic book artist. Like a Jim Lee, Greg Capullo uh, at a comic convention. And you see a lot, mile, you know, Mile long amount of people waiting, waiting to get their autograph. And you're like, that could be me one day. And it could be. It definitely could be you. It definitely could be you. But you also got to understand that there are always two sides to every coin. There are. And for every Jazza and ZHC, there's guys like me. <laughs> or, you know, there, there are people who try try so hard to make it and they just can't they just can't um so let's let's get to the lives Let, let's start with the art side uh first of all let, let's let's 
let's be real here. Okay, let's get to the actual artwork itself. Your artwork, what you draw. Your artwork is only worth what people are willing to pay for it. Okay, I always say that to you guys. I could put a number, for example, on this piece of art here, I could I could say, oh, this artwork is worth $1,000. Is it? Well, I worked, uh, you know, I worked uh, 100 hours on it. That's like $10 an hour. Is it? It doesn't matter how long I work on this piece of art. If I could say it's worth $1,000, but if nobody's willing to pay $1,000, then this artwork's not worth $1,000. That's how it is, okay? First of all, I will tell you this. The lack of time and effort you put into a project does not mean it's going to be successful, all right? As an artist, you are... You are subject to an audience or a client who are actually the ones who who are actually the ones who determine the value of your artwork. Okay? Your artwork is only worth as much as someone's willing to pay for it. Okay? And let me give you a full example of that, okay? Uh my my brother. My brother from another brother, Jazza. Uh, when when he, I, I remember he had that Kickstarter. Remember he had that Kickstarter to uh, renovate his uh, to renovate his uh, uh, his shed. He was going to renovate his his house so he could create a studio. Okay, this is before he got his uh, big, you know he bought his big building and all, and all of that stuff. And for the first time ever, he he put in the Kickstarter. All of his artwork, all of his artwork. He was going to use it to fund. He was going to use it to fund his uh, renovation. And, and I'll be honest, the price he was able to sell his artwork, I can't get for a lot of my artwork. I cannot get it for a lot of my artwork. Now, his artwork's fantastic. Deserved every single penny he got from it. But I have a lot of artwork that I tried to sell that I could not sell for that much money. And that's just the reality. And his flew off the shelf like this. Now, granted, a lot of people buying that artwork, they were, you know, it was more than the artwork. It was more, a lot of it was the cause. A lot of it, they wanted to support uh, him. And of course, the artwork's fantastic. Of course it is, right? So again, it doesn't matter how long you work on a piece of artwork, okay? What matters is how much value that gives to somebody else. So again, you could spend a good, uh, like 20 hours on a piece of art, but if someone's only willing to spend $5 for that artwork, if someone's only willing to spend $5 for that artwork, then that's all that artwork's worth, five bucks. That's all it's worth, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? The life of a freelance artist, when you start out, it's tough. It's very, very tough because you are trying to get companies to notice your work. You're trying to get people to hire you. You never start off big. For a lot of you guys who want to be concept artists, you're not going to get a job at Marvel. Your first job is going to be at Marvel. There's no way. There's no way your first job is going to be uh, as a Marvel concept artist. There's absolutely no way. It's extremely rare because you are competing, right? And that's one thing. It's competition. And it's way more competition than when I started coming up, right? Way more competition. There are millions of people I won't say millions, but thousands upon thousands of people trying to be a concept artist. Thousands upon thousands of people who want to work on a Marvel movie, not just you. So the competition is fierce. Same with YouTube. Okay. Now in YouTube, there's room, really room for everybody. There really is. So people who watch me, they, they also watch a lot of my contemporaries. Okay. There's no pick and choose. There's no and or or. Right. You could enjoy my work and you could join my other artist friends work as well, right? You, there's time to watch both. It's not like, uh, you know, where it's like, um, it's not like network TV where you're, you're either watching one show or the other. It's not like that. Okay. You, there's room for everybody. However, how many of billions of artists are out there now trying to make it on YouTube? How many? And how many, how much content will the algorithm push to these people? It's a lot. So it's a slow process, slow burn, okay? 
in terms of trying to be an artist, I'm going to tell you my, my story. Uh, yes, I got, you know, out of college, I was lucky enough, and I told the story the other day about how I got my job at, uh, at Dreamwave. And it was fantastic because I, I was working in comics. But if for all of you working in comics, if you want the straight up answer for the amount of work you do in comics, you get paid very little. The money's not there. The money's not there and it's hard. It takes a long time to get established income as a comic book artist. When your page rate is only even even just say for example, I told you my page rate at Top Cat was only like one hundred ten dollars a page. Can you imagine that? Uh, now, for some of you in, in part of the world, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for some of you in part of the world. But when you're living in Canada, or you're living in the U.S., and you're only making one hundred ten dollars, and if, just say you could only do one page a day, a hundred dollars a day, that's not enough to live on your own. It's a lot enough to live if you're maybe you're, you're living with your your parents, or if you're or, you know. If you got a lot of roommates, maybe you're living in a place where you there's like 10 guys <laughs> together. <laughs> but it's not enough to live on, especially not today. Now, I, I'll be honest. I'm not sure what the page rates are today. But from what I heard from my friends, it's not as much. It's definitely not as much as it. it it's inflation. Wage doesn't inflate, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Right. So... In terms of comics, the page rate's not great. You have to try to uh, earn that money yourself. And here, here's another thing. Here's another thing. To be an artist, you have to be a good businessman or business person. Or at least be competent enough to hire somebody who is a good business person. You have to be. because you. It's unfortunate because as creatives, we don't want to do that side. I don't want to do the business. I don't want to do taxes. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to negotiate how much I should be earning, right? I that, That's the part I hate the most. That's the part I hate the most. You got to negotiate. You got to figure out your value. And then when there is no job available, you only have one person willing to hire you. They essentially have you where they could, they could really, they could really just tell you, hey, I'm only going to pay you this much. And then you're kind of uh, stuck with what they tell you. Say, no, I'm not working for that. Fine. Go get, find another job. What are you going to do? Nobody else is going to give you work. What are you going to do? So especially when you're when you're uh, starting out, that happens. That happens. So that's that's the bad part. Like I'll, I'll tell you guys, like when I was working at, in comic books, it was it was very rough. I had some very rough years. Uh I would be sending my portfolio everywhere to every editor I knew, an email. Everybody would say, "Oh, great stuff. We don't have anything right now." And that would go for months. I, there were six months at a time where I had no work as a comic artist. And then when I do get a job, when I do get a job, then all of a sudden all of them came. It's like I had like five jobs at once, and then you have a hard time saying no because you don't know when the next job's coming. And you know, I have a family. My daughter uh, was was here or, at that time already. You know, I had bills to pay. And, uh, you know, my wife really kept our family afloat at that time. She really did. Because she was the nurse. She was the one bringing in the solid income. And uh, it's always a struggle being a freelance artist. It really is. Finding the work is much harder than actually doing the work. It's the finding the work. That's the issue. That's where it is. Okay. So for all of you guys who want to be artists, that's the biggest issue. Actually finding the job. And if you're going to be a comic book artist, you're always finding, trying to find a job. It never stops. It never stops. Even professional state. Because for those of you who are trying to get into comic books, you're not just competing with new guys trying to get into comic books. You're competing with professionals. They're going for the same job as you. They're going for the same job as you. Professionals. So you have to try to be better than professionals. Because even the professionals are looking for work. They're looking for jobs. So.
So it's not glamorous. It definitely isn't glamorous. To the, and then, you know, I was so busy at one point. I was so busy because, you know, I, I told you I couldn't say no. I was working on three books at once. I talked about this the other day. I was working on three comic books at once. And I was failing on all of them. But I was working. So I was happy because I was working. And then my wife went up to me one day and she goes, Hey, are you, are, James, are you, are you happy? She said to me. And I'm like, well, you, you know, I'm working, yeah. And then she goes to me, well, you know what? We're, I'm not happy. And she goes, you know what? You're, 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 just, you're home. You're working at home. But we never see you. You're in your office. Your, your home office. You're in there 18 hours a day. Uh, and can we try to find something that... Can we try to find a job where, you know, you could spend some time with the family? And that's when I decided to make that career switch. Because when I decided to go back to school to be, uh, you know, to be a, to start, to try to work in film, when I made that decision, uh, I was actually getting the most work in my life as a comic book artist. I was. But, you know, for my family, for the sake of my family, I'm like, okay, maybe I could try to find a job where I could go there and then leave it there. And then, and then work. So that's why I went to school and worked in film. So now, again, some people are able to make it work. My buddy, David Finch, made it work, okay? And there's lots of examples of people who made it work, but at the same time, there's always lots of examples of people who don't make it work at the same time. So let me tell you about film quickly, okay? And this could be a long, convoluted answer, right? But, it, you know, I got a lot of thoughts. All right. When I worked in film, I remember I went uh, for my job interview for a company called MPC. MPC, so this was a job to work on the movie Watchmen. Okay, a lot of you guys don't know, I, I was a visual effects artist for a long time. Uh, I was gonna work on a movie called Watchmen, okay? But when I, my job interview, because uh, they found out about my experience as a comic book artist, they're like, hey, well, why did you decide to go into film, they asked me. And I said, well, you know, I wanted a place, I wanted a place where I could just uh, leave my work at work and I could go home and, and spend time with the family. And the first thing the interviewers, there were a few interviewers said to me when I said that, it's like, then why did you go into VFX? That's what they said to me. Why, why did you want to go into movies then? And then I realized why they made that statement later on. And, and you guys hear about the treatment that VFX artists get. You know, that was a big story a couple of months ago. And to be honest, that's a very true story. And uh, to be honest, uh, to be honest, sorry, I was uh, hiding somebody because he offended me. <laughs> I'm easily offended. No, no. But it's a hard job to work in movies. You are literally like there weekends. You are there all night. There were times uh, I had to beg so I could go home for dinner and then come back to work afterwards at 9 p.m. to stay there overnight. Like, it's it's a rough job. It's a very rough job. Now, is it rewarding working in movies, seeing your name in the credits? Yeah, absolutely. That's a lot of, you know, it's wonderful to see your name in the credits of a movie. But the, the amount of work that you do and the, the amount of unappreciation you get it's it's not the most glamorous job. You you even said you know a lot of those people came out. A lot of those people came out. Uh, those people who worked for Marvel. They said I will never work on a Marvel movie again. They were like that, and I totally get it. I understand. I understand what these guys are going through because it's not glamorous. It's not easy. There's and there's very little reward for it. Very little. Like they get paid okay. I would say get paid okay. Still not enough, if in, in my uh, humble opinion, as a former VFX artist. Still not enough. But when I hear all those stories about those VFX artists, I'm like, yeah, I 100% believe them. I 100% believe them because I was there. I, I know what that's like. I know what that's like, that grind. So. But then, then again, you also have YouTube. Now, again, a lot of you guys watching want to be art YouTubers. And who could blame you? Who can be able to blame you? To, to have a job 
where people watch you, where you entertain people, you're able to give them value. Not only that, you're able to do something you love and get paid for it. And the, the ceiling is so high when it comes to doing YouTube. The, or being being even even an influencer the ceiling is so high and you see that like you you could be you could literally be a millionaire millionaire in months if everything goes your way okay but again the problem with that as i mentioned before you're not the only one who wants to do it you're not the only one there are millions of kids out there like the, the isn't that what they say the number one job kids want today is to be a youtuber right the number one job Nobody wants to be a doctor, a lawyer, dentist anymore. No one, no one wants to be those things. They want to be YouTubers. And again, who could blame them? I still want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> I wish I was a YouTuber or a successful YouTuber. There you go. Of course, it's a glamorous, you know, and because it's the lens of us seeing people like uh, Charlie D'Amelio, right? Charlie D'Amelio, just as uh, some. Uh, you know, you know, a, a regular, a regular uh, young young girl who blew up so fast, and, and the way she blew up, fast, super fast. Where a lot of kids around the world saying, "Hey, if she could do it, I could do it." You know, I was actually listening to a an interview. I was actually listening to an interview where, where uh, like a founder of TikTok actually said the key to TikTok success is having these regular people blowing up and then everyone believing they could do it so everyone starts using the platform so in essence what he was kind of saying in essence what he was trying to say was that kind of i i and i fully believe this like you can't, you can't prove it but it's like TikTok hand picked people to go viral they handpick people to go viral, right? So that others will think they could do it too. So they will use the platform because they want to get the success that those top TikTokers you see, those top TikTokers you see, uh, they want the same type of success. So they're going to use the platform. Right? They, they were picked. And I could totally see that. Now, hopefully that's wrong. But I could totally see that. And it makes so much sense. Like, it makes so much sense. And, and you think about it, when you go to your TikTok feed, even your, your YouTube Shorts feed, you don't choose that. You don't choose, you don't choose what you watch. It just appears. And then the algorithm thinks, okay, you like this, you like this piece of content. We're going to show you more of that content. So they could choose what you watch. They really could. Okay, they really could, and they, you know, some even say without getting, you know, getting to, uh, you know, so uh, take that with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that's fact. I'm not saying that's fact, but it, it does make sense if you really think about it. And then also listening to some, they, you know, they say in uh, China, and I hear from some uh, friends, you know, TikTok in China. The kids there in their feed, you know what they get? They get a lot of people studying hard. They get a lot of people wanting to be engineers, and doctors, to the point where in, in Asia, the number one job people want to be in Asia are engineers, are, are, uh, do are medical professionals. What's the number one job people want to be in, <laughs> in North America? YouTuber, right? So I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the, that's the, you know, that's what they were saying. It, you know, there's no way to prove that any of that, but it's interesting if you think about it, but with that in mind, that shows you how hard it is to become a YouTuber. It's more than hard work guys. I, I, I do believe it is a lot of luck too. Like you got to put in the work, but I, I'll even admit for myself, I feel like I was uh, very blessed to be in my position. That I have right now to have the following I have right now that's a blessing to me uh, I don't think it's because there are a lot of people who work harder than I do let's be honest a lot of people work harder than I do I it's more than hard work I would love to say it's just hard work it's just hard work and hard work is a part of it you really do need to work hard that's the only 
because it's the only variable you have to work hard. But there's a lot of factors, a lot of quote unquote luck that comes into it as opposed to just, oh, I worked hard, so I deserve to have a million followers. No, you don't. No, you don't. Unfortunately, no. My artwork is better than this guy. I, I deserve to have more following than him. No, you don't. Nope. That's not up to you. That's not up to you. The number one thing I said, you know, and, and this is a long answer to uh, what the, what uh, that, that uh, commenter said. Uh, as much as we would like people to follow us, nobody deserves anything. It's really up to the audience what they like and what they don't. What they like and what they don't. So... So, you know, we always say, you know, nice guys finish last. And that's another thing, guys. You're, you're, and here's an ugly side to every industry. It is very true that nice guys always finish last. That's true. I've seen it in all industries. You'll always see somebody who's, quote unquote, a not so honorable person getting ahead getting ahead and you're like that person you know i'm a more honorable person why why is that guy getting ahead it just happens it just happens and there's nothing you can do about it that it's just that's how the world is unfortunately so that's a long convoluted answer to that so and you just gotta kind of get just got to go with it so all right guys so that's a long long convoluted answer so art at the end of the day you know what it is art's hard guys being an artist is tough if you could make it if you can make it, the rewards are, rewards are fantastic. But understand, there's going to be a lot of struggle. And one more thing I'll, I'll say on this before we move on. Um, everything takes way longer than you think it will. And again, that's the problem with TikTok. People blew up so fast. That's the expectation now. That's the expectation now. People blow up so fast. Someone who, who puts all their all into TikTok and they don't blow up in like three months, they, they feel like they're worthless you know a lot of kids do that like well why why do they do it? I, I work so hard for three months when things take time they really do it took me five years guys five years i i started in oh actually six years i started in 2013 i'm coming on 10 years i'm coming on 10 years on youtube right now 10 years and it took me six years to get a million subscribers Six years. Now it gets a, some people. It gets faster. It's faster. But again, you don't control that. You don't control who subscribes to your channel. You don't. So, you know, I, I've been penciling this for a long time. Hey, this is one of my longest uh, penciling here because there's so much going on. You know, the session I might only be able to do the uh, chorus today. But we'll see. Okay, so long, long, convoluted answer, but. She asked, or he asked, or she asked. <laughs> Was that Alaria asked? And that is the real answer. The honest, honest answer. Now, guys, all, all I would say to you guys, control what you can control. That's all you can do. All you can do is control what you can control. You can't control who watches your stuff. You can't control, uh, you can't control how many subscribers you get. You can't control that. What can you control? You can control your video quality. You can control your art quality. You listen to what people are saying, to what they actually like. Okay? That's what you can control. You can control your work ethic, how much time and effort you put into a project. That's what you can control. Focus on that. Don't focus on how many views you get. Don't focus on how many subscribers you get. Do focus on the criticism you get. Do focus on that because maybe there's something you can learn from it. But focus on what you can control because that's all you have. If you are there and you're just looking at the numbers, you're going to get disappointed really fast. So don't worry about the numbers. Worry about your skill and making yourself better every single day. All right. That's what you should get control. Okay. So long, long, long convoluted answer to that. But hopefully that helped, Delaria. Hopefully that helped. Okay. Let's go to an easier answer, an easier question from my friend, uh, Player YouTube. I like that. Player YouTube. What a player. Uh, before I do that, let me get a pen. Let's get started, Anking, guys. About time. What time is it now? 
I spent 45 minutes sketching this out. 45 minutes sketching this out. This is what, okay. Give me one second. I dropped my pens, so uh, let me let me uh, find. I'm just using a zero one pen, guys. Ah, I found it. Ah, I found it, guys. I found it. We're ready to ink. You guys ready to ink? Here we go. Uh, let me just uh, start this. Uh, while I turn, uh, while I fix my camera, let me ask answer player YouTube's question. Draw Kratos in a Marvel style. Yes. I will absolutely draw Kratos, and I'll, you know what? I'll be honest with you guys. Hey, Michael's here. My buddy Michael Alvin's here. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, my brother? Good to see you. By the way, um, uh, my friend Michael, uh, for you guys who know, I have a children children's show. It's, it's called uh, Time to Draw, and uh, I had a show in San Jose, and Michael showed up with, with, uh, well, with, with his uh, daughter. So thank you for coming, Michael. It, it was great to meet you in person. And uh, to be honest, I wish I had more time to talk to you. I actually wanted to, to talk to you after, uh, but I, I didn't see you <laughs> after I was done uh, in the line. Uh, so I, I apologize. I wasn't able to get to talk to you, but it was great to meet you in person. I'm, and I'm glad you had a great time at the show. I'm glad. I'm really, I'm really happy you had a great time at the show. Uh, hopefully we could, we could uh, maybe have a coffee next time because uh, Michael, Michael's been a long time uh, follower of mine. So it was great to see you, my friend. Very great, great to see you. Um, so let's uh, talk Kratos quickly. Let's talk Kratos quickly. Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, I believe the new uh, God of War game is coming out. If it's not out already, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, Ragnarok? It's coming out. So uh, I actually do want to do a uh, God of War piece. Okay, so uh, we'll probably do be doing that this week. We're going to be doing that in the next, uh, next uh, day or so. I'm not sure if we'll do it tomorrow. Maybe I'll do something a little bit more uh, easier tomorrow. Oh, actually, to be honest, tomorrow I'm probably still working on this tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Let's be honest. I'm probably going to be working on this. Oh, it came out yesterday. Okay, that's right, Michael. Right on. But, uh, yeah, and it looks fantastic. It looks great. And I, I'm, I'm actually very excited to draw it. It'd be fun to get my buddy uh, Andy Park to be a part of that. Now, you know, Andy... You guys know uh, the visual effects. Uh, he's the man, or visual effects, the the lead concept artist at uh, Marvel now. But he was, he's a big, big. Um, he was big, big designer for God of War back in the day. So if anyone knows Kratos, it's definitely, it's definitely Andy. So. Inking time. We got the inks. So yeah, we'll we'll probably do that sooner than later, my friends. Sooner sooner than sooner than later for sure. So let's go. By the way, uh, by the way, Michael, you're up. Uh, you're either up very late or you're uh, up very early. <laughs> it's like two o'clock a.m. your time, right? Not a mistake. Uh, let's go. Next question. DFL Studios, 1988. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, millennial. Woohoo! I'm not millennial. I wish I was. <laughs> I am. Uh, I am unfortunately Gen Z, my friends. That's as close to baby boomer as you get, Gen Z. But uh, yeah, asks. I know you've uh, probably been asked this question a hundred times, but what's your advice on improving on drawing? I struggle to work around work and family life, so my artwork is like a slow burner. And thank you for that question. And. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, my, my my friend said the horse is looking fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> uh, by the way, to my my friend who's watching, uh, can I just say uh, when I'm done this, I'm gonna send it to you, Paul. I'm gonna send it to you. All right, all right, Paul. I'll find a way. I'll find a way. Come on. Maybe even hand deliver. No, no, I can't handle it. I'll, I'll send it to you, Paul. <laughs> So, um, anyway, in terms of improving, my friends, in terms of improving, uh, I struggle to work around family, my work and family life, so my artwork is like a slow burner. Okay, so I guess my question is, 
for that. And, and it's a very common question and a very important question. Okay. The, the biggest. Uh, uh, oh, you're welcome. Bob. You're welcome. Bob. Uh, the biggest question I have for you, my friend, is uh, what's your intention? Is your intention to get a job uh, doing artwork? Like you want to change your career to uh, get a job in art? Or is your intention just to be a better artist? You know, and, and you just improve uh, on your craft. Okay, because those are two different things, right? These are two different things. Uh, but, okay, so we'll, we'll do a little bit of both, right? Because... I uh, struggle to work around work and family life, so my artwork is like a slow burn. If anyone understands that, of course it's me. Absolutely. Uh, so, number one thing I would say to you, especially with the family life, if there's one thing that you could do, is try to get your family involved in what you're doing. And that's one thing I try to do now, because, you know, I, I actually have a lot of responsibility. Uh, I got, I got, I have things I, I, uh, uh, be on YouTube now that I, that I work on. But, you know, I do things like I get my kids to to pick references for me. They help me pick what I'm going to draw. Like my, my, my youngest daughter, she, she loves drawing. She's actually learning Procreate. And um, she actually watches a lot of my friend uh, Art With Flow, Art With Flow's tutorials. And uh, and she's, you know, I don't even know Procreate. I'm not, I, I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> She knows more than me. And by the way, shout out to my, my friend Art With Flow. Art With Flow. Before we move on. I, I want a huge shout out to my friend Art With Flow. I am so impressed and... And... Uh, uh, say proud. Of everything she's been doing. Like, I think she's at 800,000 subscribers now. Because I, I remember when we were together in the Art Alliance. A long time ago. Uh, you know, she was doing a certain type of content on that side. At that time. And... Uh, you know, it's content she wanted to do, but I think she's doing content now that I think she was born to do. As we say, born. Like, I don't really think it was born to do a certain thing, but she's doing content now that is so right for her. And I, I couldn't be more proud of, of what she's accomplished. So uh, shout out to my friend Art with Flo. It's, uh, it's great. Oh, hi, Weblight Dreams. Good to see you, my friend. Always good to see you here. Um, but... Uh, try to, trying to get the family involved, and that, that way you can spend a little bit more time. And, and try to share that with them, you know? That's always hard. Of course, because, you know, your responsibility as a family man is to spend more time with the, with the family, right? So I, I'm assuming you're, the, the way your question is uh, structured, it sounds like your parents. That's, that's what it sounds like to me, okay? So coming from parents, that's what one way I would start things, okay? But now... You know, I'll, I'll, my my son, guys, like my son, uh, he's not as interested in art as he used to be, right? Uh, he, like, of course, he's a lot of like a lot of you guys. He's he's very into into video games, definitely into a lot of video games. Loves Valorant, and that's why I drew the Valorant piece. So another way is to do, you know, to draw things that your your kids like. A lot of them is to draw things that uh, they like. So uh, make sure, you know. And it's more fun. It's more fun. They're more... They're more... They would be more um, forgiving if they see you doing something that they like, you know? So that's another way. That's another way, okay? Now, in terms of uh, getting around the schedule, like, everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. Everybody has something going on. Especially these days, we have... Uh, Oh, th <laughs> thank you, Bo. So Valorant is pretty great. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of you guys play Valorant. Who here plays Valorant, by the way? Who here plays Valorant? Now, now my son, by, by the way, my son, um, he's actually loving the new Overwatch. And the reason he loves Overwatch is because um, he didn't play the old one. I, I heard those. Were, that was the complaints about Overwatch now, is that... Uh, uh, there you go, Bob. Uh, 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 the thing about Overwatch, uh, I, the biggest complaint I heard is like there was nothing new in the new Overwatch, right? It's nothing new. But uh, my son loves it because he never played Overwatch before. So, so someone who was new to it, he actually lo loves Overwatch. But of course, he lo he loves uh, Valorant as well. 
as well. But uh, but in terms of, of uh, working schedule, you know, you sometimes it's just about trying to set aside some time for it. Like for me personally, right? Again, because I'm streaming now. Like I've been streaming now for how many days straight now? How many days straight? You guys can tell me. How many days straight I've been streaming now? It's been... Uh, when did I start? Was that Tuesday? So we're, we're coming up on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, we're coming up five days. Five days now. And it was because I, I find I work better in the morning. So it's just a matter of trying to find the time, the extra time for yourself. That works for you. That works for you. I tried to stay up late and draw. And I think you know, and I'm sure if I if I just plowed through it, I'm sure if if, if I just plow through it, and then Michael says, "Great to see you again. Great to see you too, my friend. Great to see you too." Uh, if I just try to plow through it and go like 20 days straight, uh, just uh, streaming in the evenings, I'm sure I would have got used to it. But for me, the mornings just work out so much better. Starting my day, starting my day, doing something I love to do, you know, and then when after I'm done feeling I accomplished already so much during the day it works for me so you got to find what works for you in that sense can you find an hour of the day where you could just shut everything off and just dedicate that hour to the craft you want to do uh, that's something that will work hopefully uh, you know I will never tell anyone to, to sacrifice sleep especially if they're just learning right but you know, and especially nowadays, like before, I would say five years ago, every, everyone was like, I, I'd say, was it five years ago? Uh, all the gurus, all the gurus were, were like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, sleep. I'll sleep when I'm dead. It was like whoever slept the least, they're going to be the ones who are the rich people, right? Now, I'm not saying that uh, billionaires don't, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, people out there that do just get by on a few hours of sleep. And myself, uh, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I sleep about uh, maybe five hours, something like that. And that works for me. Okay. That works for me. I would never, never tell anyone, hey, you are only, you know, you only have to sleep five, you know, you slept six hours. Oh, you're wasting. I would never tell you that because everyone's different, especially uh, I'm older, right? I'm an older guy. Now, uh, like you need your rest. You need your rest to function. You need it for brain power. So it's all about, are you maximizing every minute of the day that you're awake and that's what it's more about i would only sacrifice sleep if there's like a deadline or something like that you know but the schedule works for me so just finding those times where you had the time to improve and also because you have limited time you could try to find time try to find ways that uh would optimize the time you do have you know schedule yourself okay this this particular drawing session here, I'm not just going to draw. I'm going to try to learn uh, perspective here where you try to learn certain things. Okay. So if I were you, you have limited time and your goal is to your goal is to make art your career. Then I would focus the time on learning a new skill and mastering a skill as opposed to just going and drawing your favorite thing. That's what my time would be concentrated on. Okay. Now that's a long, convoluted answer. It's hard to again. It's hard to answer if I don't know the context of uh, what you're going through. So it, it it is a little bit harder to answer in that in that sense. But you know, it is what it is. But good luck. Good luck to you, my friend. Good luck to you. Okay. Uh, Man of Steel. Okay. And I did want to get to this today. The Man of Steel unofficial says, "Can you please draw all Kevin Conroy Batman?" Yes. Well, we lost Kevin Conroy yesterday. And it was interesting, like yesterday's stream, we were talking about Kevin Conroy, right? We were talking about Ke our favorite Batman in yesterday's stream. And Kevin Conroy passed away yesterday. So condolences to the family of uh, Kevin Conroy. Uh, we lost the great. We definitely lost the great. Um, you know, I grew you know, I was one of them. I grew up with Batman the Animated Series. You, you guys, you don't know this because a lot of you are young. Like Batman the Animated Series... It got people to take Batman seriously. It really, it really did. It got Batman 
Because at that time, we were coming off Batman and Robin, right? Well, well, uh, l let me take that back a little bit. I'll, I'll take that back a bit. Uh, you know, because I think it came out more with during the Michael Keaton Batman. So that was a little bit more serious. But even that got campy after a while, right? But even though it was animated, people g took Batman more seriously. It was more than the Adam West Batman. Because at the time of the Michael Keaton Batman, like, people thought Batman, like, as this, took comic book characters as a joke. Because the shows like the original Batman series with Adam West, it was a joke. It was like a comedy, right? It was a comedy. But Batman the movie, Batman the animated series, it really got people to take Batman as a very serious character. And guys like Kevin Conroy, you know, really helped in that in the that term right yeah so a lot of people consider uh kevin conroy to be the their favorite batman so yeah great loss great loss so uh so will i draw all the bat uh, see uh can you draw all the kevin conroy batman right uh probably you know I'll, I'll be honest probably not not immediately okay uh uh because i'm you know I'm taking a step back from dc characters uh for now but uh, but again uh, great loss and condolences to the family of uh, Kevin Conroy. All right. Uh, let me uh, see here. By the way, guys, again, if you guys want to answer, a qu ask a question, by all means, please do. Uh, please do that again in the community chat. Best place to ask. Best place to ask uh, the question, okay? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mo's Mock Dad. Says here are some awesome 40k heroes and monsters. You got Emperor of Mankind, which I'm I, I am gonna draw. Uh, the four chaos gods, gray knights, and necrons. Okay, right on. Like this is a lot of. I'm actually really enjoying this. A lot of fun. I am drawing a little bit slower uh, than usual, but uh, I am answering some awesome questions that you guys are, are giving me today. Uh, so, so I'm actually having a ton of fun. A ton, a ton, a ton of fun. So. Okay, so next question here. Uh, I, I think I answered that, Adrian, earlier. A knuckle sandwich says... Uh, <laughs> my friend says, more 40k, yes. Uh, Tyranids? Is that how you say it? Will make my son happy. Oh, oh, you got it. You got it. We're, we're doing more... Tri we're doing more Warhammer, my friends. We're doing more Warhammer. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Knuckle Sandwich says, which Marvel characters would you feel fit, would fit perfectly in the Warhammer 40k world? You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna bring that uh, question to the chat. And hello, hello, Brandon Brawl Stars. Thank you for thank you for being here, my friend. Uh, do I know you? Let me ask you if I know you. Brawl Stars. My son used to love Brawl Stars. Brawl Stars. I would like I think I would like to do a Brawl, Star pe Brawl Stars piece one of these days. But thank you for being here. I should check out your channel. I'm always, you know, you're always intrigued when someone with a check mark uh, pops up in your chat. So thank you for being here, my friend. So we'll, we'll, we'll check that out. Uh, have you run out of microns yet? My friend Webbike says no. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I have not yet. But uh, my question to you guys: What Marvel characters do you think would fit in the Warhammer 40k world? You would, you would know better than I would. You would both know better than I would. But I'm trying to think to myself who would make. Uh, uh, what would uh, do that? So Brawl Stars and a Marvel Saw? Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Just loving popping on the streams. There you go. Thank you for being here, Brawl Star. Uh, oh, sorry. Brandon Brawl Stars. Brandon Brawl Stars. There you go. Hulk for sure, V. Hulk for sure. Carnage would say. Someone says uh, late to the game says Carnage. Uh, I get the checkmark with uh, 100,000 subs. Yes. When you when you hit 100,000 subs, Michael, you, you get the checkmark. Now, I got my check mark when I was over a million because I didn't know you had to apply for it. You got to apply for the check mark, or you got to let them know that you deserve the check mark. So I didn't get my check mark till I already had a million subs. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm taking my sweet time with this. I'm taking my sweet time. So I, guys, this is gonna be a two dayer. I, I guarantee this is gonna be a two dayer. 
because I, I have a feeling this particular character, we're, we're, I'm going to aim to just finish this character because I do have a hard out in a couple hours here. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Here, let's see. Here. Uh, let's see here. Tony Stark would make epic armors. That's true. Knuckle sandwich. That's true. Because uh, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, right? Because uh, I was I was reading up on some Warhammer lore, and I'm lear I'm learning as I, as I do these things. So Warhammer is like, if I'm not mistaken, forty thousand years in the future, correct? Forty thousand years in the future. That's what it refers to. And I'm looking at all the armors and stuff, right? Uh, my sketchbook three forty says punish an Iron Man, maybe, maybe Emma Lloyd says Drax. Gonna go for Drax. There you go. Uh, Black Panther has the resource to build something huge. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Michael Alvin says uh, he needs 90,500 more. There you go. <laughs> well, maybe you'll need a few or more than that. Go subscribe to my buddy Michael Alvin. Guys, go go check it. Go check out his uh, channel. Awesome dude. Awesome dude. Uh, Mario as well. Don't forget to subscribe to Mario. Everybody, support each other, guys. We're a community here. We're friends. Let's support each other, okay? This is our community. This is our, our, our morning hangout. Let's uh, let's get stuff done, guys. Let's get stuff done. This is our time to get together and let's get stuff done together, right? So, uh, let me see here. Uh, let's see. So my friend says, uh, Marvel made a series of comics for 40k already. Really? Ultra Means and the Sisters of Battle. Really? Okay, well, I have to look that up. I definitely have to look that up. I have to check that out. So it's already a Marvel style. <laughs> it's already a Marvel style. So there you go. There you go. Oh, by the way, Mario, subscribe to Michael. There you go. There you go. See, that's what I'm talking about, guys. We're community. We, we help each other. We definitely help each other. There you go. So, uh, Michael, you, now it's uh, 90,499. Uh, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, so, I have to check that out, though. I definitely have to check out that Marvel comic series, Warhammer, for sure. You know, I think that would be an easier in for me to read the Marvel comics to get to get into the lore, for sure. But there we go. Justin asks, uh, any chance we will see you draw Transformers Rise of the Beast artwork? Maybe. Maybe. I, I will say that uh, my buddy, uh, my buddy, well, my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, his name is uh, uh, my Kuya, Kuya Raham. That's his name. Kuya Raham. His name is uh, Raham Bilang. Bilang. Uh, he's a uh, uh, married my sister, but uh, he's super into uh, he's super into statues, and he actually got for me, he got for me a uh, Optimus Prime and Jetfire. I mentioned this the other day. I mentioned this the other day. He got me an Optimus Prime and Jetfire um, models, and they're they're coming from the Philippines. I'm super excited. Uh, when I get it, when I get it, I'm going to uh, unbox it live. And then I'm going to draw it because they combine together. That's why I'm so excited. I'm so excited because they combine together. So I can't wait. I can't wait for that to get here. And uh, we'll unbox it live and we'll we'll actually watch it together, guys. Okay? We'll definitely watch it together here. So. <laughs> oh, uh, my friend says, not easy to sure. It's not easy to get into the lore with the comics. I use YouTube to learn. Okay? <laughs> YouTube's probably the better to learn you know I, I i actually wanted to watch uh, a whole bunch of you know to understand the property better uh but i i actually did uh bookmark a whole bunch of uh, warhammer videos to watch but i just didn't have the time well, you know why also i didn't have the time i was um i'm putting out a video today guys an actual video an actual video today guys that uh, lego uh black panther video that will be coming out in about an hour and 45 minutes so maybe in an hour and 45 minutes from now, I'm going to tell you guys to watch, stop watching the stream and go go watch my video, okay? Go watch my video. <laughs> there you go. Oh, V's now, it's nine nine ninety nine thousand four hundred ninety eight. There you go. 
Yeah, you get in there, my uh, Michael. We're gonna get you that check mark, my friend. I'm gonna get you that check mark. <laughs> oh, my friend Weblight says my style is uh, Marvel style times. And ask me a question. Uh, please do go a ask in the community tab. Okay, go to the community tab and ask your question there. I made I made the wolf muscular. Look at that. That's a Marvel style. If anything, if anything, right? I made the wolf muscular. Look at that. <laughs> I made the wolf muscular. What's going on there? I'm gonna make him a little bit furrier though. He looks like a bear. I, I I gotta get better at drawing wolves. I gotta get it better. That's one thing. Um, a little weak, as we say, a little weak in my wolf art. My wolf art. Okay. Michael says he plans to go live on Saturdays as well. Awesome. Go for it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Michael. Michael's the best. Michael's the best. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Yeah, so uh, and, uh, let me ask uh, completely though. there, Justin. Yes. Absolutely. You guys know I love Transformers. And again, nowadays, uh, pretty much what I'm doing my channel is just things I love to do. No more algorithm hacking and all that. I'll just... Uh, I'll just... Uh, No more algorithm hacking. We're just going to come here every day and we'll just do what we think is fun. Okay? We'll just do what I think is fun. Because even I'm thinking, do I really need to do those very highly edited videos anymore? Like, uh, if I'm not really into it for the views anymore, it's more like, we're, we'll, it's just our hangout, but we'll see. But, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. You know, when I started streaming, I, I started losing a lot of subscribers. <laughs> and that's okay. I expected that. I Don't worry. I expected that. Because a lot of people, they come, they come for different reasons. A lot of people subscribe for different reasons. And it's really not about the subscribers anymore. Anyway. So let's see here. Uh, Horus leads the Luna Wolves chapter. So the wolves make sense. That's true. That's very, very true. Bro. Very, very true. Bro. Uh, Bacon Hustle R says, you look Filipino. <laughs> My booty. <laughs> that's why that's, that's the extent of my tagalog that's the extent of my tagalog you know i i have a uh my my uh my wife's um uh, my wife's uh grandma we go we call her lola uh, she used to live with me and she was a big help to me and my family she passed away uh, uh, quite a few years ago but she couldn't speak english that well she couldn't uh, at all period she couldn't speak english she couldn't speak english so the uh so the way we talked okay the way we talked to each other because she lived with me and my wife she helped uh, take care of my of uh helped us uh, take care of the kids when i was at work but uh the extent of our conversation was uh in english translated in english translated would be like uh uh james uh you hungry you hungry? And I'm like, I'm full. Ha 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 ha. That, that was our, our whole conversation for five years. That was our whole conversation in Tagalog. James, James, kaina, gutom Ha ha That's it. That's it. I can't speak Tagalog. She couldn't speak English, but we made it work. We made it work. And she, she was the best. She was the best. But uh, she did pass away. Uh, I think a few years ago. So, so there you go. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if there's any more questions. I, I like questions, guys. Give me some questions. There you go. Uh, newbie asks. He goes, "Hey James, would you consider drawing the Bleach anime characters in your signature styles? Big fan of your artwork. Possibly, for sure. We're, we are definitely doing uh, more anime stuff as well. Uh, my son, uh, speaking of my my brother-in-law." Uh, my, he got my son all of these One Piece characters. He got him a, a ton of uh, these One Piece figures, and and they look great. My my, my brother in law loves One Piece statues. He's he's got the big ones at his house. They they look incredible. I was like, man, I wish I could afford those things. They, they look so awesome. Uh, so I will probably be doing a One Piece, uh, uh, live stream sooner than later. That's one of the ones. Maybe we'll we'll do that pretty soon.
But uh, yeah, I'm definitely uh, thinking about doing a lot more anime stuff, like may maybe Demon Slayer, maybe. But we'll, we'll see, guys. We'll see. You, maybe you could tell me what uh, anime I, I, I should do. In my style. Maybe you, maybe you guys can let me know what anime you would like me to do in my style. To do that. So, Okay. Okay. Take care, Paul. Take care, Paul. Hopefully you'll enjoy <laughs> what this turns into, Paul. <laughs> my friend. My friend's taking off. So, so we'll see. Uh, and again, guys, by the way, by the way, please, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to ask me a question, go to the community tab. It's better for me, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, there are times I actually want to clip out. The conversation or there could be a time i want to clip out the conversation so i do want the option of being able to credit you if you were the one who asked me a question that i felt would benefit a lot of people so that's why i want you to ask in the community tab uh pretty pretty much okay so go check that out um let's see let's see if uh there's any more questions here nope no more questions but that's okay that's okay. But uh, I think I saw here. I think I saw here. Uh, see, this is why I don't like answering from the chat. I, I love talking to you guys in the chat, but it's hard to read all the questions. It's hard. Uh, so Angel Bob. Hey, good to see you. Angel Bob's been here every day this week. Every day this week. Thank you for, for being here, Angel Bob. One Punch Man versus Godzilla. Now, isn't that a fun combo? Isn't that a fun combo? Uh, I, you know what? I probably will do one thing. I might do sooner than later. We we might do a, a, a Godzilla one sooner than later. Sooner than later. Uh, my friend uh, who who just left here, uh, you know, big fan of uh, Warhammer. So, but uh, his his uh, nephews, from what I understand, is a huge uh godzilla fan and i love godzilla too i love godzilla too so i might do one where we're gonna draw a whole bunch of godzilla monsters i think that would be a lot of fun maybe maybe we could do that as well sooner than later that'd be a lot of fun okay so i'm just gonna take my sweet time with this piece here sweet sweet time sweet time oh, let me record you know what also you know one thing I, I noticed one thing i noticed about doing these streams guys I noticed that uh, I keep forgetting to turn my cameras on. I, I, I keep forgetting. So when these videos actually come out, guys, don't expect the highest quality edit. Because uh, I just keep forgetting to turn the cameras on. So a lot of it is what you're gonna what you see on YouTube, just uh, put to better music and and some zooms and stuff like that. Don't expect, do not expect high quality uh, videos from me. From now on too. Well, it, that's expected anyway because I, you know, I I had like the best editors on YouTube. I, I will say that I had the best editors on YouTube working for me, so, and it's just a shame I can't afford to keep them on the payroll anymore. But I I had the best guys. I really did. Uh, you guys know my buddy Mark Michael, my my be, you know my childhood best friend Mark Michael, um, and Doctor Masaki. Like those guys, they're in my opinion best on YouTube. In terms of editing the best the best uh, it's just unfortunate I, I couldn't keep the i couldn't keep the train running it's just very unfortunate i couldn't keep the train running but it is what it is right so let's see here next question we got another question here oh i i see another question let's see this is a new question uh let's see here uh sahil gamer x says i have a question how do you make this kind of drawing However, I try. I cannot make good kind of drawing, which I like. <laughs> well, you you don't want to know. You want to know a secret, Seal? I think secretly, a lot of us don't like our own drawings. We don't, and a lot of us, a lot of times, sometimes we think our drawing is is quote unquote worse than what it really is. It's been very rare. I step back. I'm like, yeah, my drawing's awesome. Hooray! I didn't do that yet today. I, I was. I said I was going to do that more often. Hooray! I never do that to my artwork because I always see things I could have done better. I always do. I always do. So that's common. And also you got to understand, 
Probably the most important thing you have to understand, my friend Sahil. Important thing you have to understand. I'm old. <laughs> but also, I have literally 20... Uh, if we count... Again, I, I said if we count... That time I actually did a comic book when I was a... And I got paid for it when I was a teenager. I have 25 years of professional experience. Or actually... No. 30 years. If we count that time... I'm showing my age. I, if we count that time... When I got paid to do that comic book, because I was paid, so that's quote unquote professional. I have 30 years of professional uh, art experience, okay? I am assuming you don't have the 30 years of professional art experience, okay? So it comes with time, guys. It comes with time. It comes. It definitely comes with time. So. I, I, I always tell, tell you guys, like, especially you young, you young kids, like, and I changed my career, you know, and this is, again, again, guys, this is, um, uh, a lot of you, a, a lot of you are very young. This is, uh, when I talk about patience, and I think that this is what, unfortunately, is the bad part about the social media age when a lot of people are blowing up, like, in days, you know, before... You know how before we say, you know, there's no such thing as an overnight success? You know, and that was true. For me, that was true until until 2020. Because everybody you saw on YouTube before then, everybody you saw, it is extremely rare, extremely rare for you to see someone who blew up on YouTube or whatever profession overnight, like literally overnight. Once TikTok really started kicking in, that was the fastest I ever, I have ever seen anyone get success, to the point where was somebody feel try so hard on on TikTok for a month, and they don't gain success, they feel like a failure, and that's ridiculous to me. That is ridiculous to me. Um, ridiculous in terms of people thinking that way. I changed my career. What? So uh, I went to comics. I went into film. Even in film, I changed my job three times and what I was doing. Because I started off as a... I wanted to go in as a uh, 3D modeler. And I, I was a 3D modeler for a bit. And then I transitioned into matte painting. And then I, I was doing storyboards. Like so the, so the job changed much when I was working in film. And then I, I threw that, all that away to be a YouTuber. I threw it all to be a YouTuber. So, and you know what age I, I decided to be a YouTuber, guys? What age? I was 35 years old when I decided to be a YouTuber. You know, the other day, Jazza called himself the old man on YouTube. Nah, -uh. this guy. This guy's the old guy on YouTube. But then you guys like... Like even, but uh, what I take solace in, you get, you see guys like Jordan Matter. Jordan Matter is fifty five years old, right? He's fifty five years old. So there's a lot of time for all of this, guys. A lot of people say you don't have time. You got a lot of time. You got a lot of time. And when you are young, like I'm sure you are, Sahil, it everything takes time. You just have to have patience. And I think that's one thing. Uh, putting my old man boomer glasses on. That's one thing I see with this uh, quote-unquote generation is that people don't have the patience. They just don't. They want everything to happen. Everything needs to happen in a, in a few months as opposed to years, which it took everybody else before that, right? Because people have just blew up in a few months. So the expectation and the hope is that you could change your life in a few months when that's not true. It can be true, but it's only the select few. That are able to pull that off. So that's what it is. Uh, my buddy D not so good artist there. Also quit my nine to five job last year just to do YouTube. You're yeah, awesome. And absolutely. I am not surprised. Your channel is fantastic, my friend. <laughs> so makes sense. Makes sense. What happened now? My friend uh, D not so good artist. Uh, 
Uh, tell me what what anime character should I should I draw in a Marvel style? I'm, that, see, that's an opinion. I value all of your opinions, but most most especially my friend D, not so good art, artist. So uh, what what uh, anime character would you like to see me do, my friend? There you go. Let me ask you that. So uh, just just to sum it up, there, my friend, um, you have a lot of time. Don't uh, don't beat yourself up. Because you feel you're not as good as as the people you see on YouTube or on TikTok, don't beat yourself, don't beat yourself up for that, okay? Because it takes time, and sometimes that's my worry. Like like the like kids today, they they uh, they worry so much that they're not achieving what they think they should, and then they just fall into depression, and they uh, you know, and uh, hopefully they don't do anything drastic because of that, right? And that's what you hope. Right, so. Uh, CD not so good artist. One Piece always does well. There you go. I was just mentioning before you you came in the stream. I am, I'm actually planning on doing a One Piece uh, drawing this week at, in a Marvel style this week. So would love to have you there, my friend. Love to have you there. It's not gonna look as good as your stuff because your your stuff is real uh, real anime style, right? So you could tell me how cringe it's gonna look. Okay, cringe. Cringe. James, a drawing of One Piece. Cringe. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, uh, ninja, someone didn't mention Ninja Turtles. Yes, Ninja Turtles. I will be doing a Ninja Turtles piece sooner than later. Uh, and again, because my my nephew loves, absolutely loves Ninja Turtles, so I do want to do a Ninja Turtles piece for him. So let's let's do that. Okay, a few more questions just came in. Uh, my friend Weblight is here. What inking tips do you have for artists trying to up their inking game? Woo! Uh, first of all, don't follow me. <laughs> uh, follow a guy like my buddy Richard Friend. Richard Friend is the best inker I've ever worked with. Bar like, hands down. Hands down the best inker I've ever worked with. And I worked with the greats. I worked with some of the greatest inkers in the world. But I would say, out of everyone I've worked with, uh, Richard Friend has to be my favorite inker that's worked on my stuff. He made my stuff look the best, in my opinion. Now, there are inkers out there that I've worked with that... Um, there's inkers I've worked with that uh, that were fantastic. Uh, I got to know them as fantastic people. Uh, maybe they didn't ink my stuff as well as... Uh, Richard did, but they did also did a fantastic job. I got the chance to work with uh, one of um, uh, Brian Hitch's inkers, um, uh, Andrew Curry, who did an incredible job on my work as well. Uh, but just thought, you know, it's always hard to give advice on something when you know there's people that on YouTube right now that do it way better than you do. You know, it's always hard because, uh, for example, uh, I always say when people ask me how to color, don't follow me. Go to uh, uh, K. Michael Russell. Uh, I, I, again, I forgot his channel's not called that. Color with Kurt. Color with Kurt. Don't watch me. Watch Color with Kurt. Get advice from him because that's an actual working uh, comic book professional in terms of coloring. But in terms of inking, like I, I can only speak to my style. Their web light, like because I make all the decisions, I make all the decisions uh, when I'm inking. Okay, like like for example here, I know where everything goes. I spend a good forty five minutes because this character is so detailed that I spend a lot of time making, figuring out where everything goes. So there's so much to this character. I literally spend an hour today just laying it out. But when it comes to the actual inking itself, um, uh, you know, a lot of the times I just kind of make up stuff on the spot. But one tip I will give to you that uh, hopefully will make sense is that I always put a thick line where I feel I could put my hand around, okay? This took me a little while to understand, okay? But uh, I, I will try to, to uh, teach this part to you guys, okay? So let me give you an example. Just say I was going to draw this uh, extremely expensive box of Copics here, right? Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at that. Thousands of dollars of Copics. Not thousands, but a few, few hundred. To be honest. Okay, so just say you, were, you drew this box of Copics. Okay? Uh, when you ink them, 
right? I would actually put a thick line where the edges are. Okay, so when, when I say edges, anything I could wrap my hand around. I imagine it like a spider. Just say that you saw a spider crawling across here. And then it goes around the side. The side where the spider crosses where you can't see him anymore, that's where I put a thick line. So just say you drew this box of Copics. I would put a thick line along this edge. I put a thick line around this edge and this edge. Okay? Maybe the bottom. But I would not do it here. 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 The only places I would put a thick line is around here, around here, and around here. I always say anything you can put your hand around, that's where I put a thick line. So here I can put my hand around this. That's where the thick line should be. I put my hand around this. That's where the thick line should be. So in the drawing I'm doing right now, so just to give you a little bit of context, the drawing I'm doing right now, here, so you see this part here? I feel like I put my hand around it. So that's why I put a thick line there. You see this line up here? I feel like I put my, my hand underneath there. That's why a thick line here. You see the wolf's arm? I can put my hand around it. That's why there's a thick line. Okay? That actually took me that actually took me a long time to figure out. That took me a long time to figure out. But, but it made so much sense after I was done figuring that out. Okay? So give that a try. It takes a little bit of time to kind of fully understand how to do that. But I, I find that helps separate uh, parts of, uh, of the detail. It helps separate it in a, in a, in a very uh, a clean way. It's a clean way of separating things. So, so. by the way, you know, you know when my Copics, uh, what do we call it? What do the kids call that again? Do they call that a flex? Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's not not that I flex. That is like flex. That's why I can't pay my guys anymore. That's why. <laughs> so there you go. All righty. Next question. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, that's a little tip that I can give, but again, there are like, there are a lot of guys out there. There's, um, what's her name? Uh, Sia, there's a, there's an artist named Sia Ohm. I, th I think that's her name. Sia Ohm's fantastic artist. I think she has some great inking tips as well. Like there, these days, there are so many wonderful, uh, comic book artists on YouTube these days. Uh, it's pretty incredible that, uh, that all of them are finally coming to YouTube. I'm so happy they weren't here when I started YouTube. <laughs> Because nobody would follow me. They'd follow the real guys. They're going to follow the real guys. So. It is what it is. Now next. Next question. This guy looks so much. Like overkill. Guys look up. I, I think it's overkill. Look up overkill. Uh, spawn overkill. This, this guy reminds me of him so much. He reminds me of him so so much. Right so. There you go. Uh, how much time will it take you to finish? Depends on the drawing. Like, to be honest, this kind of drawing, this is an eight-hour drawing. This is like a, a at least eight to ten-hour drawing for both of them. So we'll probably be working on this for a while. I'll, I'll be hard-pressed just to finish this guy. I, To be honest, I'm, I'm kind of doubting I could finish him uh, in the stream. But we'll, we'll try. We'll try to finish him in the stream. Also because I'm talking a lot. So let me uh, re refresh. Uh, Mario says, how do you stay consistent with my art even when I get bored? How to push through hard times? The only way, and, and this is the, the honest truth, honest truth, Mario. The only way you could draw when you don't feel like drawing is if you have a deadline. It's the only way. The only way that, that works for me. The only way that works for me. Because no matter how fun the drawing is, no matter how good it's turning out, uh, that that excitement only lasts a certain certain amount of time. It really does. It only lasts a certain amount of time. And there are times where you just don't feel like drawing. And if you have no incentive to keep drawing, it's hard. 
it's hard to have that discipline to just sit there and just draw. You know, you know what I mean? It's very hard. Again, the only way, the only way I would seem to, I, w I would be able to do it, seem to be able to do it, is if I have a deadline. Whether that be I promise myself I will have a YouTube on this particular day. Uh, you know, to be honest, guys, that's why, that's why I hired those guys, my best friends. That's why I hired them. It wasn't necessarily I needed the help. I didn't. Like, I could do the stuff on my own, right? Like, now it would be nice to have those guys because, uh, you know, YouTube's not my full-time thing anymore, right? But, but I didn't really need them. What I needed was uh, a reason to keep drawing. Because when, when, when my, my wife passed, you know, I, I told you guys this before. When, when my wife passed, uh, I found myself, you know, just kind of sitting alone. When my kids went to school, especially. When my kids, uh, like, when kids went to school, I'm, I'm like there in the house all, all by myself. And I would sit down at the drawing board. And I would just stare. I would stare at a blank page for hours, for hours upon hours. So when I hired uh, Mar uh, Mark, as you guys know, Mark is my, my childhood friend. We've known each other forever. I've known him since he was born. When I hired him, I hired Joe. Uh, they came to the studio every day and got me to draw again. Got me to draw again. And... Uh, that's what got me through. I had a reason to draw. So for you, and and let's pray you'll never have that kind need for that kind of incentive. I, I hope you'll never need to have that kind of incentive. But for you, you just need that to find that incentive, a reason to keep going. And that that really uh that will help you push through the times that you just don't feel like drawing. You need a reason. You know, whether that be, you know, you promise yourself, I got to get this video out tomorrow. Whether that be, I told this guy I'm going to get this, or I, you're being accountable, right? Being accountable. Like you, like for example, Mario, you say to me, James, I'm going to finish this drawing. Even just telling a friend, hey, I'm going to finish this drawing on uh, Thursday. When I'm done, I'm going to go in and I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Having those type of incentives, it like, unless it's like life or death type of incentive, like it, it's not gonna hundred percent help you. Because I'll be honest, when I when I was working in comic books, when I was working in comic books, that incentive only lasted. The deadline incentive only worked so much. That which is why I was late, a lot of the times, a lot of the time I was late. Uh, but it helps. So having incentive. To finish something on time that helped. When you know for the Star Wars mural, the first Star Wars mural, my original intention was to work for on that for a year, for a full year. If you guys remember, those of you who are uh, who were there, the OGs, as we say, those OGs, and and Apple even said this the other day, guys. The, 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 yes. There you go, Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, Apple even said this uh, a few days ago. Like, what this feels like, what we're doing right now, feels like those OG uh, Star Wars mural days, right? It feels like that. But my original plan for that Star Wars mural was to work on it for a full year until The Last Jedi came out, right? A full year until The Last Jedi came out. But then... My buddy Apple, he told me, hey, James, bring this mural, bring this mural to Alamo City Comic Con when you're done. Alamo City Comic Con is in October next year. Bring it there. We're going to have a nice setup for you. You know, and knowing Apple, I knew he was going to have some uh, Star Wars people coming. In fact, uh, uh, you know what? He was supposed to actually have Carrie Fisher there. He was in the works to get Carrie Fisher at, the, uh, at that con. Uh, but that October... Uh, this was the year before that I believe it was that uh, was that October that she passed away uh, before uh, the next year uh, but uh, so okay I have an incentive now I got to finish this piece by October because if I don't I won't have this opportunity this great opportunity my friend Apple's giving me 
And then Apple threw me a curveball. He threw me a curveball. He said, hey, James, uh, we were speaking to the city, uh, the venue we want, and it actually looks like, it actually looks like uh, we can't do an Alamo, we have to push Alamo City Comic Con up to May. So you remember that? If you guys remember that, how, how crazy that was. I went from, I'm going to do this piece, I'm going to draw this piece for a year, for a year, with the intention of now finishing in October. First of all, I was going to finish it in December. Then I was going to finish in October. Now I got to finish it by May. I push, we pushed up the deadline to five months. Five months we pushed up that deadline. And I'm like, what? that was a big enough incentive for me to get off my behind, as we say. And like, no, let's do it. Let's do it. Because I didn't see any, any other, op uh, no other convention. No other convention would have gave me the shine, or I won't even say shine, but the opportunity that my buddy Apple was about to give me. Like, so, uh, thank you, first of all, to my, my brother from another mother, Apple, for, uh, for giving me that opportunity. But that incentive then changed everything. And in fact, changed my life. Because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have gotten to be on the Star Wars show. Uh, like, which was literally two months later after that, right? Which was still before my original deadline, right? I, I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity. I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity. Uh, I wouldn't, the opportunity to do the Infinity War mural came in September that year. September. Remember, I wanted to finish the piece in October. September was when Asad Ayaz, Ayaz when Kevin Feige saw my piece and then Asada Yaz contacted me in September. So a lot of opportunity. If that didn't happen, if uh, that uh, didn't happen where I felt I had to push, you know, my deadline up, things could have turned out very different than the way they did turn out, right? Again, woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? Uh, again, you never know what would have happened. We never know. But that really changed the direction of my life. Uh, the fact that though the incentive to finish drawing, uh, it got pushed uh, for me working faster. Let's just say that. Okay. So trying to find the right words here, guys. And sometimes words, words are hard. Words hard. So incentive, brother. Incentive. Incentive. Now, Doug Chang uses a method. Like we always talk about how to, uh, you know, how can we avoid how do you avoid uh, burnout? No, not, not burnout. How do you avoid uh, art block? That's that's it. That's what I'm looking for. Art block. That's a question. All artists have art block. All of us. All of us do. I don't care how professional you are. There are times where we just don't feel like drawing. There are times we just don't feel like drawing. And to be honest, that that's one reason why I don't say right now to you. Because I'll tell you guys my original goal here. I, I actually do want to kind of see if I can stream every day for a year. I really do. But I, I don't want to make that promise yet because every single morning now since I've started this, and again, it's only been a week, every single morning since I started this, I was excited to get up and draw with you guys. And I know that's not going to be the case every single time. So that's going to be interesting to see if uh, how well I do when I'm not interested. And you guys will know. But the thing is, you guys... Uh, the thing is, you guys are the ones who help in incentivize me. So, I it's a goal of mine, but I don't want to make that a uh, quote-unquote public goal. Well, it's kind of public, you guys know. But uh, I don't want to make that official yet. Because if I'm able to, I, I need to get through a time where I'm so busy, but I'm still able to figure it out and still stream. If I could get through that, then I can make that goal official. And when I do make that goal official, I'm going to actually start titling these uh, streams differently. I'm going to call this uh, Drawing Thing in Marvel Style Live Day 100. And I'm going to start numbering these uh, live streams. Day 100, right? So yeah, I, I think it's doable, Mario. I, I think it is. It's just a matter of planning. It's just a matter of, of when I'm staying out late, making sure the alarm's there so I can, I can go ahead and wake up and stream. Or the times where... I'm out of town, 
that I'm prepared to still stream wherever I am out of town, right? So that's just, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, guys. We'll see. So that was a very long, convoluted way to answer your question, but but hopefully that helps Mario. But, at the, you know, when you break it all down, the easy answer, incentive. That's the easy answer. Find what incentive works for you. What what makes, what incentive do you have that will help you to draw through the hard times? Or when times are great. I remember, uh, I think when I was in college, uh, I was going through a, uh, a breakup, right? I was, I, I was breaking up with my girlfriend at the time. And... And I did not want to draw, but I had an assignment due the next day. I had a, I had an assignment due the next day. Uh, just like my comics career, I left everything to the last minute, and I had this project that was due the next day. And as much as I did not want to draw, because I was going through that uh, breakup uh, back then, as much as I did not want to draw, I had to. I had no choice. The assignment was due the next day. Right? So... What can you do? You just push through. Even though I, I was nervous through the whole thing, even though I, I hated every minute of it, I still had to do it because that deadline was there. I had a deadline. I had no choice but to draw when emotionally I was not in a good place. But I got through it. I got through it. And I drew a pretty good turtle, if you ask me. I had to draw a turtle. <laughs> it was uh, for scientific illustration. And the turtle, if I must say, it's pretty good turtle. <laughs> pretty good turtle. There you go. So, hopefully that answers. Hopefully I'll draw another good turtle later this week. We'll see how that goes. All right. Next. Let me refresh. Oh, by the way, guys, again, if you want me to do the long answers, go ahead into the community tab and ask your question there. What time is it? It's 549. Got about, I only got an hour left. No, no, no. I got two hours left. I got, I got two hours. I got two hours. There you go. Next question here. Uh, from my buddy Angel Bob's back again. Here we go. Hi, James. Excited to see your multi-monster Godzilla pick. Woo! Who's your favorite kaiju other than Big G? I love... I love... G, G, Gigan? Is that how you say it? Gigan. Gigan. Uh, distinctive design, bust out chest, and hook hands for the win. Um... Who's the one with the three heads again? Who's the one with the three heads? Is that Mothra with the three heads? Looks like a dragon with the three heads. Who's that? Help me out here, guys. Help me out here. Help me out here. You know, you know why I like that? Well, you know what? When I was working on... When I was working on Tokyo Storm Warning back in the day, right? Uh, I had a character that was just like that. King Ghidra. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ghidra. That's what I was looking for. Ghidra, not Mothra, Ghidra. I had a, uh, I actually drew a character there uh, in Tokyo Storm Warning. And I'm going I'm to tell you right now, between you and the, you and me, not many people are watching this, right? How, have, if you guys have seen Tokyo Storm Warning, you know how similar that is to Pacific Rim? So similar. Very, very similar. Very much the same. So much the same. So much. <laughs> but um well you know let's let's be honest it's, it's very it's very similar to a lot of the mech stuff you see nowadays so i, I won't say it was a ripoff because to be honest uh tokyo storm warning had was very heavily inspired by a lot of the uh uh, gu uh i want to say gundam and all, all the mech anime out there so but but even the outfits were very similar i'm just saying I'm just saying the outfits look look very very similar to what I drew in Tokyo Storm Warning. So similar, so similar. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in that series, I, I got to draw uh, what's it, uh, King G uh, Ghidorah, right? I got to draw a version of that. Okay, so it, it was like him, but not right. But he had three heads. One was a metal head. And it was just a lot of fun to draw, right? Just a lot, a lot, a lot of fun to draw. I, I, I enjoyed drawing that series. I highly enjoyed it, and unfortunately, I messed it up. That series kind of led to a lot of good... Like, I, I had... When I drew Tokyo Storm Warning, guys, 
I had every opportunity to shoot myself into comic book superstardom with that series. Like, it was built in. It was built in. Like, literally. I was... my That book was the fourth book on the cliffhanger imprint. Right? Uh, for those of you who don't know, cliffhanger at the time, they were posing it to be like the next Image Comics. They are posing it to be like the next Im Image Comics because Joe Mad was doing Battle Chasers. Uh, uh, J. Scott Campbell was doing Danger Girl. Uh, Humberto Ramos was doing Crimson, if I believe. I believe they were calling it the next Image Comics. I was the fourth comic in there. Well, I won't say me. It was really, it was really the writer who was really the lead of that, of course. Right? He he had the name, but you know, I was drawing giant mechs. I was I had the inker of Brian Hitch. I had the writer of Authority. I could have been the next Brian Hitch, guys. I really could have been if I didn't mess it up. If I didn't mess it up, I'll be 100% honest. I messed up that gig. I messed that up. Because even, even you know, when my, the first issue came out, when the first issue came out, reviewers said that my art was just as good as Brian Hitch back then. Can you believe that? Now, that's, that's uh, as quote unquote sacrilege to say today, but that was a quote somebody said. My art was just as good as Brian's Hitch. That what a reviewer said. You talk about a high compliment. Like, wow. If you had an amazing compliment like that. Incredible. And dudes, I messed that up. I messed it up. I forgot what the original question is, because now I'm just mad at myself now. <laughs> but everything works out for a reason. I, I wouldn't change a single thing because, but back then I was young. I was very young when I did that. I think it was in my early 20s. And, uh, you know, I definitely was not as professional as I should have been back then. But, uh, you know, you learn from those things. You definitely learn. You definitely learn a lot from those things. So, Oh, well. Well, well. Live and learn. I forgot what the question was. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I'd say that one was King Ghidorah. Th that is my... I, I'm excited to do that again. So, we'll see. We'll definitely see. What happens there? All right. Next question. What else you got for me? Let's go. Sahil also asks, how, how do you find this kind of art, kind of drawing to make? Uh, fun. Again, you know, I'm at the point. You know, the hard work is actually done already, you guys. For me, the hard work's done. The hardest part was laying out, seeing where everything is. That's the hard part for me. The easy part is adding the uh, inking it and adding the details. That's actually the easy part. This is the part where I'm enjoying. I, I could turn off my mind and just kind of draw. That is what I, uh, you know, it's what I enjoy. So if I, if I wasn't drawing this with you, uh, that's why for me personally, I'm not really into, um, I'm not really into listening to music when I draw. I, I, it doesn't help me as much when I, li when I uh, listen to music as I draw. You know, sometimes if it's a song I know, I'm there singing along. Uh, but I prefer to listen to podcasts when I when I draw. Uh, not really audiobooks, though I should. It makes sense because I could probably get through a ton of books if I uh, if I just listen to audiobooks. But uh, podcasts, I love podcasts when I'm drawing. I need to hear somebody talk when I'm drawing. But right now, I'm just listening to myself talk when I draw. Right, so... So the edge, uh, because it's it's at the point right now where I could just turn off my mind and just concentrate on on talking to you guys as opposed to drawing. Because the actual drawing part, the hard part's done already for me. That's why sometimes I'll take a little bit extra time just to make sure that everything's in its right place. It's where I want it to be. I'll take that little extra time and then sense it. Now, if there's anything I didn't work out too well is, is the wolf's head. I might uh, get some reference for the wolf's head. But stuff like this. 
I like like doing these little wires in his belly, you know. Stuff like that. It's not whatever. Art Dad, another another super chat, Art Dad. Oh, buddy, buddy, you've been you donated every single day this week. You so uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So our dad just says, Good morning, everybody. Good morning to you. My buddy our dad. Good morning to you, my friend. Uh let's see. I I have a more I didn't realize I had a lot of messages here. Let's see. Oh, not so many messages. Where's those messages coming from? Oh, I know what that, I know what that's from. I know where that's from. I thought I knew where that was from. So that ten messages. I have 10 messages unread. I see no messages. It's lying. It's lying to me. There you go. So Art, Art Dad, you've been donating so much. Maybe maybe I'll get you to, uh, to pick a subject matter that we will do. I, I think we talked about that yesterday and then you graciously handed it off to others in the chat, but, but to be honest, you do, you deserve it, for sure. Oh, uh, another super chat from Let It Be A Mystery. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much for the super chat. I, I have no idea how much that's worth, but, but but thank you so much. I really appreciate that, my friend. Thank you so much. And make sure you leave a comment whenever you super chat, guys. If you do super chat, leave a comment so I can uh, at least uh, answer a question if you have it, by all means. Uh, thank you, thank you so much to everyone uh, who who donates. It means a lot. Uh, but but yeah, Art Dad, if, if you have, because you know, literally, you've been very generous this week for sure. If you have, if you want to, if you want to, oh no, thank you so much. They let it be a mystery. Thank you so much. Uh, but but Art Dad, if you have uh, something you'd like me to draw or you'd like me to see me do, by all means, let me know. Let me know, my friend. So let me just, I'm going to bring out my ugly eraser here. Oh yeah, this is the best eraser in the world, my friends. Fucking yuck. What happened to this eraser? What happened to that eraser? What happened there? Uh... So... Anyway, guys, anyway. So again, guys, you don't have to donate for me to talk to you. <laughs> okay, I will say that. You don't have to super chat to do that. Uh, but if you do want me to, um, if you do want me to talk, uh, you know, if I answer your question. That's the, you know what? It's a plastic eraser, Michael. It's a plastic eraser. <laughs> it's just seen better days. Times are that tough, guys. Not only has to get... Not only did I have to let go of my staff, can't even afford a proper eraser. <laughs> Just gum. That's right. Uh, by the way, if you want me to answer your question, guys, uh, if you want to super chat me, I, I really appreciate it. But you, you all you have to go to the uh, community tab. And let me just uh, throw up the community tab quickly for anybody who wants to know. Uh, let me just do that quickly for you. I can show you guys. So community tab. This is the community tab here. Uh, go to my channel. Go to my channel once again. Just give it a second. Internet's a little slow today. Let me know if I'm choppy too, guys. Let me know if I'm choppy. Uh, it's saying that my internet's slow here. Oh, see, it's not even doing this. What's going on? Let me know if it's internet. It's a bit slow today, okay? Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh... So go to my channel. Nice thumb, man. Uh, go to the, my channel. Go to the community tab. That's the community tab. And then go ahead and ask your question here. Okay? Ask your question here. All right? That's what we will do. That's what we will do. So let me uh, change it back to me. And then let's go by the next question here. Uh, let's see here. I have another question from Mario. Do you prefer coloring digital or traditional? Um, I feel, okay, because that's a two, two-sided question there, Mario. Uh, I feel personally, I think digital, my digital work looks better. And this is me, okay? Okay, good night, Weblight, good night. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Um, 
for me, uh, I feel my digital work looks better than my traditional. Okay. I feel it works better. Uh, I'm still trying to learn the Copic side of things. I definitely am I'm trying to learn the Copic side of things. Uh, I also believe that it's actually better for YouTube if I did do traditional. It's actually, I think traditional actually works better. I think people like it better. So both have their, their things to it. Um, I do find digital, it depends what it is. If something's a little bit more complicated, like if something's a little bit more complicated and I wanted to color it, if something's more complicated, apologies, I got distracted a little bit. If something's a little bit more complicated, uh, I actually find coloring it traditionally is a lot faster. It's definitely a lot faster than it's a lot faster than trying to do it uh, digitally. Because, you know, it's it's very much more simple. I, it depends what it is. It definitely depends. It's a hard question to answer. Mario, you stump me. You stump me. You stump me, my friend. But uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. It depends on my mood. At the end of the day, it's my mood. So, uh, cleaner look. That's right, Scribble Scratch. And by the way, Whitey's, uh, if you think this is long, this is nothing, man. This is nothing. Wait till you uh, get into comic books, man. Wait till, wait till those uh, 12, 15, 20, 30-hour drawings come in, man. Takes a while. Also, you know what? The size of paper matters. The size of paper matters. I would be done this drawing if it was like an 8.5 by 11 piece. But this is uh, 11 by 17, A3 to a lot of you guys. It's a lot of you guys, A3. Uh, I believe that's what you call it in uh, in Europe, right? A3. Uh, we, we call it uh, uh, tabloid size. Do you call it tabloid size for those for my friends in Europe? Do you call it tabloid size? But it's like comic book paper, 11 by 17, and there's two. It's a double page spread. So this will take a while. This will take a while. I was actually hoping if I rushed hard enough that I could get it done today. There's no way. No way it's going to be done today. So I'm only on, still on the one character. Right? I'm only still on the one character. Okay, so let's uh, let's go up here. Let, let's work on the wolf head. I'm, a, I'm actually going to grab some wolf head reference here, guys. I'm going to drop my style, but I want it to... Uh, what a... Uh, I want it to look... Like a wolf. There we go. There you go. That looks uh, wolfy. <laughs> wolfy. <laughs> muscular wolf. Look at that. Look at that, guys. This guy. This wolf's more muscular than you. This wolf's more muscular than you, guys. There you go. Uh, so, next question here. I'm just gonna restart this first. There you go. Uh, from Scribble Scratch says James, would you do get your kids art again? I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. Uh, the issue is my kids are old now. That's not cute anymore. <laughs> Five years ago was cute. They're they're much older now. Uh, also, my son doesn't draw anymore. Uh, he just uh, lost. He just kind of lost interest in drawing, which is fine. You know that, that happens to everybody. Everybody, uh, everybody. Um, you know, they get interested in other things after a while, and that, I'm okay with that. That's it's all good, all good. Now, uh, however, I did talk about maybe that's something I could do with you guys, right? Uh, where I'm not saying that uh, give me your your uh, ugly drawings or anything like that. I will say. Uh, we might be doing a week where I'm gonna be, all I'm going to be doing that week is drawing your OCs. Maybe we'll do something like that. Maybe we could do something like that. I'll draw your OCs for a week. Or maybe if, uh, and I mentioned this before, if you, one thing I'm going to do. Oh, by the way, at seven o'clock today, guys, I have a video coming up. Seven o'clock today. I have a video, a brand, brand new video coming up. Okay. Remember a new video. You'll enjoy it. 
I'll, I'll actually tell you guys, leave the stream, go watch the video, and then come back, all right? But uh, 7 o'clock, I have a brand new video up where I take a Lego... I'm going to take a Lego uh, Black Panther mech, and then I'm going to draw it, okay? So don't, don't expect anything. Like, don't expect rock-level editing or anything like that now, guys. Uh, uh, from here on out, don't expect rock... I'm never doing a rock video like that again. Or at least not in the immediate future. It's not in the plans anymore. I'm not going to be doing anything like that for a while. Okay? But, uh, you know, I'm just doing drawing uh, videos that are fun for me. And that I enjoy. So, uh, go check that video. But, but it also gave me the incentive to uh, create... Maybe what we could, one thing we could do is you guys uh, build a character in Lego. And then I'm going to interpret it, okay, and draw it in a Marvel style, okay? So you guys build something in Lego. Make a cool, uh, whether it be a cool character or, I, I think character, I would rather do a character than, uh, than a ship or something like that. I'll, I'll probably be more interested. Not saying I couldn't draw a cool ship, I, I definitely could. It's just, uh, I would be more interested in doing like if you created a character out of Lego and then maybe we could do something like that right so no oh, there you go so maybe we could do something like that but yeah in terms of my kids though no they're, they're much older now and uh, you know they're they're improving their art and to be honest you know what makes those videos great is that the uh, the art is kids art you know and and it's great for their age it's fantastic, but then turning that, drawing that in a completely different way. That, that's what makes those videos fun. Okay. You know, a lot of people actually, um, uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they would come and they say, hey, you're, you're showing up your son. I'm like, no, he wants me to draw it that way. He thought he thought it was the coolest thing to see uh, his design being drawn in a professional manner. They thought it was so cool, and I wouldn't have done it if he didn't want me to do it for sure. Right? I, I wouldn't have done it for sure. But he was like, "Yeah, Dad, do it, Dad. That's so cool, Dad. So cool." So here you go. So, uh, from your end, Boris says, uh, suggestion Looney Tunes in Marvel tomorrow. Maybe not tomorrow, but that's definitely one that's on the radar, my friend. So, we will do that sooner than later. Uh, actually, tomorrow, if I'm going to be honest, we're probably doing this still tomorrow. Because I got to do the B side. Okay, I'm, I'm doing the bad guy. Well, who's the bad guy? I assume this is the bad guy. Is this the bad guy? <laughs> you guys, tell me. Is this the bad guy? Is Horace the bad guy? No, he's, he's the bad guy, right? Uh, so we're going to do this today and, uh, the emperor of mankind tomorrow. Okay. But I think I will try to pick up the pace a little bit here because it's already six o'clock. Again, I have a hard out in about roughly about, I have a hard out at uh, 7 45 AM my time. So roughly around an hour and a half. So I would like to get a little bit more done here. So. So yeah, we're just doing the one stream today, guys. Because guaranteed, I can't. There's no way I'm gonna be finish this uh, in one sitting. This is uh, definitely one of those. Uh, you know, this is gonna take at least eight hours, I think, to do. So, when I, when I'm not talking, it's because I'm uh, I'm trying to make decisions. See, you know, you know, I said earlier, when the decisions are made, I could just concentrate. I could just concentrate on the drawing. Uh, right now, I'm trying to make decisions because with the wolf, with the wolf, because I want it to look wolfish. Oh, I see. I, I didn't even put the teeth. Yeah, already messed up, guys. Already messed up. Messed up the teeth, because he has teeth. 
I need more ref. I need more ref. Need more reference. There you go. Now he's looking mean. Now he's looking mean, guys. He's looking mean. He's looking mean. Thor, could you be one punch man in the fight? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Because I, I, I thought Thor, Thor came into the dance. Hello, Thor. Okay, so next question, guys. Next question here. Next question. Okay, so James, I need some advice. This is from Let It Be a Mystery. We just saw you there earlier. So you gave a super chat earlier. Thank you, my friend. Uh, how to be confident with our own art. Okay? Sometimes I feel down whenever I see other people's art and think that I can never be like them. And thinks, thinks people in my Discord server kind of dislike my art due to me being not inside their circle. So the question is, yeah. So yeah, the question is how to be confident with our own drawings. Okay? So, uh, it's actually a question I expect. Okay, especially I, it sounds like uh, you're you're a very young, a very young uh, f friend here of mine. Okay, very young friend of your mine. And and first of all, uh, I apologize for the the bad comments that uh, you you seem to be getting as you were saying, but it's something that a, a lot of us struggle with. Okay, it's definitely a something a lot of us struggle with. I remember the first time that I got a dislike uh, on my uh, on my uh, video. It's the one thing I was dreading. It's the one thing I was dreading the very first time. The very first time I uh, I started YouTube was getting the dreaded dislike. Dreaded dislike. And then I started getting more. But then uh, this this doesn't this actually doesn't apply to your question. Uh, let it be a mystery. But it's something that we don't realize too is that the something we don't realize is that the mean people or the the negative is ten times louder than the positive. At least ten times louder than the positive. Okay, that's why you always see a lot of these uh, influencers fighting with their audience or with people or with haters all the time on the internet. You know why? Because hate is 10 times louder than the positive. Because if you take a step and look back, and this is what I did, I, I took a step back. I took a step back and I said to myself, look. Okay, and th this is even times where I wanted to reply to uh, bad comments, right? You know, you get a bad comments, you want to reply, you want to be defensive and, and defend yourself, right? But then I took a step back and look, and you look, this is just like one or two people. When a thousand people liked what I did, right? Now, again, this is, doesn't necessarily apply to you, let it be a mystery, but this is just something that off the top of my head where so I made a rule. For myself, that if someone reply says something negative to me, okay, in a comment on one of my videos, before I'm allowed, before I'm allowed to respond to them, respond back to them, before I'm allowed to respond back to them, I have to reply to 10 good comments first. That's my rule for myself. I have to reply to 10 good comments, people who appreciate my work. People who said nice things about me, people who are my fans, I have to reply to at least ten of them first before I address the person that said something bad to me. Okay, and let me tell you what happens when I, you have that rule. When you have that rule, what happens is when you get to the tenth person, person you reply to who did some, who said something nice about you. You're too tired to answer the guy who said something bad about you. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
So, so I, I understand where you're coming from, and it, it's hard. It, it is definitely hard, my friend, for sure. Uh, confidence takes time. It took me a long time to get confident in my art. And I'll be honest, sometimes you don't get confidence until you get validation. Validation. And I will ask you, was there anyone in that particular quote-unquote discord that liked the work you were doing? Did anyone give you good comments at all? Did anyone give you good comments at all? Okay, and I, and I hope they were. But also, uh, also, um, but not necessarily in that Discord, okay? And, and I'm talking about aside from your family, okay? Aside from your family, okay? Because your family's always going to tell you you're great, right? Your family's always going to say that you're the best, right? Or, you know, they want to encourage you, of course, right? Unless your uh, parents want you to be a doctor. Then they're going to tell you your art sucks. Go be a doctor, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> did anyone give you that validation that your work is good? Okay. Because whenever I get a bad comment, or whenever uh, there are some, I guess, but mostly they remain silent, right? Yeah. Because it's always the loudest people, right? Whether they're jealous or not, they're going to be the ones to come out of the word work. But you also have to ask yourself sometimes, okay? You got to ask yourself are they just saying your artwork sucks and then leaving? Okay, those those people don't give them the time of the day. Those people who are just like, your artwork sucks, get out of here. Uh, don't give them the time of the day, okay? But to the ones who say, look, look, your artwork's not very good, but this is why. This is why. And they actually give you a reason why they don't think your art is good. Sometimes it's okay to take a step back and listen, okay? Do they have a point to what they're saying? So sometimes the bad comments, people saying bad things about your work, you could also take it as an opportunity to try to get better at what you do, okay? Opportunity to try to get better at what you do. Okay, so this, this person said, my, my head looks weird. The way I do the head looks weird. Does it even point? Does it look weird? Okay? So I wouldn't automatically dismiss it if it is a valid criticism. That's what I'm saying. Now, if if... Where you're at, there is no doubt criticism. All you're getting is your work sucks, your work sucks. Why are you in that Discord? Get out of there. That's not helpful to you. Get out of that Discord. There's lots of Discords out there, okay? You don't need to be in that one, okay? But if every single person, or I won't say every single person, but if they're actually giving you valid criticism, though, that's different, okay? And let me tell you the difference. I had a student, okay? I was working at this uh, school, this art school, I was a teacher at this art school. It's called Max the Mutt. Max the Mutt Art School. Shout out to Max the Mutt. But there was this uh, student that came in there. Okay. Uh, he, he came in late to the program. And uh, what I like to do, whenever, whenever a new student comes, or even the first day of school comes, whenever the first day of school comes, um, I like to take every student aside because I want to get to know them, right? I want to get to know why they are there in that program. I want to know what their goals are in the future. I want to know what, what their goal is so I can help them because they paid all this money to go to school. I want to help them achieve what they want to get out of school. And then this one student can't, comes in. And I'll be honest, I've, I forgot his name, but uh, he's a very interesting cat, as we say. Very interesting dude. He comes in. And then I start, you know, he, he mentioned something and I, I just, you know, I just try to break some conversation. I, I try to uh, tell him a story, uh, you know, about my kids. And about halfway through the story, because, you know, I had a point. I, I had something I had to teach him. Halfway through the story, he goes, get to the point. He was like that. I'm like, oh. And then he was like, he had a, very much of an ego, okay? And I'm sure this is not you, Let It Be Mystery. I'm not, this is not you. This is not you. Don't be like this kid. Don't be like this kid. But he had such an ego, this kid. He's like, oh, my art's the best. He's like, oh, my art's the best. Uh, you know, I've been to five schools, and I can't find a teacher 
that uh, I've been to five schools and all the teachers suck. All these, they can't appreciate my, my, my work and what I'm trying to do here. They can't appreciate it because all, all these guys, they're just all out to get me. They never tell me, you know, and he was like that, you know, he wasn't willing to learn. Okay. And again, uh, my, my friend, let me mystery. I'm not, this is not you. I'm not, I'm not saying this is you. I'm saying, don't be like this guy to all of you guys. Don't be like this guy. He thought his work was so good. Nobody could tell him how to fix anything. Right. And he's like, I dropped out of all these schools because all these teachers, they just, they just don't get me. Right. They just don't get me. And he was like that. He was like that. Now I tried my best with this guy. Like, for example, we were in class. We were in class, and uh, I was teaching perspective. And he actually shouts in class, right? He actually said in class, "When are we gonna need this anyway? When do we need this?" And then I was actually able to explain to him why we needed perspective. I told him, "Hey, look, look, this is this this is gonna make your art better." I sat down calmly and explained it to him, and then he actually got it. He actually got it. And uh, it turned out I was the first teacher he actually trusted. In that sense, uh, maybe because uh, also maybe I, I let him get away with a few <laughs> things in that sense. <laughs> but like he had a problem with every other teacher there, right? And I, and I, I tried to talk to him, and eventually he ended up uh, he ended up he ended up leaving the, the school, dropping out of the school as well. But you kind of knew that this guy just can't be taught. This guy can't be taught, right? So uh, let it be a mystery. I'll, I'll say to you, confidence comes, first of all, when you feel like, and this is true, and I, I wish this wasn't true. Confidence can come when you do receive some sort of validation from the people that you want to impress, okay? Confidence comes from that, all right? Uh, I would love to say confidence just comes from you and your opinion of your art. It does a little bit. It does a little bit. Like sometimes you sit back and you're like, yeah, man, looks great. But then when people, and I understand, I totally understand where you're coming from. When people come and they say that, no, it's not great. Oh, that does not look good. What are, what are you doing? Of course, your confidence out of the drain. Right? And who would have confidence after that? Who would have confidence after that? Right? Who would have confidence after that? So what I would do if I were you, my friend, first of all, get out of that Discord. If, if all the comments you're getting is that, you don't need to be there, okay? But also, first of all, take a look at all those comments. See if anyone has anything anything uh, legitimate in their comments to you. Do they have a point to what they're saying? Even if they say it in a bad way, do they have a point? Like, for example, those faces look ugly, okay? Maybe there is a problem with the faces, okay? But instead of hiding what you're doing, you ask yourself, you take a step back and it goes, okay, look, they said it in a mean way. They say my faces look ugly. What can I do to fix it? What can I learn to fix it? You sure that's a car? Well, it looks like it's been in a car crash. <laughs> no, they say a weird comment like that, but then you're like, oh, is there a problem with my car? Is the perspective off? Did I not draw the tires correctly? You know, you take a step back and take away the negative stuff and you say to yourself, okay, what can I take from this that will make me a better artist? Okay. And then practice and then it will come. Time will come when it when it will get better. But don't validate yourself at this point. Don't let your validation just come from people on Discord, okay? Because you're learning. You're young. You're learning. And it takes time. It takes time. Okay? This, you know, if you're going to take care of this, take, you know, find people that are legitimately interested in helping you, okay? Whether that be your teachers or, or whatever, okay? And, and I understand it's hard, especially being young and especially, uh, you know, seeing other people get the praise and, and all that stuff. 
uh, I don't know this Discord, and let's you know. And if they are only appraising other people because they're their friends, okay, that's definitely not a Discord you want to be a part of. Okay, it's not where you want to be a part of. But also, see if that's you know, you know, because I I don't I don't know the Discord that uh, you're talking about here. I I don't. Okay, I don't know. Right. And you're saying that uh, it's due to you not being inside their inner circle. Okay, get out of their inner circle then. Don't even be in that Discord. Okay, find people that will legitimately, I would suggest to you, get out of that Discord, find a different one where they're a little bit more inclusive, right? And see if they have the same comments. Because if they have the same comments, and my uh, camera just went out. If they have the same comments, then maybe there is an issue. Okay. So it's tough, uh, and I apologize. You had to go through that. But you know, you know, whenever something like that happens to me, whenever something like that happens to me, I actually, I, you know, and I think a lot of you do too. I, I blame myself first. In, in that, okay. There is a problem in my art. That's where I go to first. I always go to, uh, instead of me saying that, instead of me saying, okay, and they could be wrong, instead of me saying, oh, it's just because uh, they like this, these guys are their friends, that's why they like them all better. Is it? Maybe. Or is it they're right in terms of what they're saying? So you got to take that step back, okay? It's just like those people that, uh, why isn't this focus on? Oh, there you go. Okay. It's just like, uh, you know, you know, you know, one thing I hate and one thing that, that editors hate, you know, one thing that hate, uh, editors hate is when you argue with them. Editors, when, when, like I see it so many times too. And I've been on that side of the coin on the editor side. Where people will come and show an editor their artwork, and then they would argue with them. They would argue. They're like, uh, "Oh, this perspective off." No, it's not. You know, if you look at this, but but if the line was here, it was like, "Why are you arguing with the editor? Why are you arguing with a guy who's going to give you a job, potentially give you a job, right? Like, why are you doing that?" It's a. Uh... You know, their their intention is to help you, okay? So you you got to really weed through that. You got to figure out who's actually there to help you, who's there just to troll you, and and it's an ongoing process. No matter how old you are, no matter what profession you are, you're always going to get that. It's just something we got to navigate through. So how you can, how can you get confidence by first of all believing in yourself, okay? Being willing to learn, be willing to practice every day, be willing to try to improve. And when you go online, don't just look for people to praise what you do. Look for people to give you advice. Look for people to show you how to be better. Okay? The best way to be confident is to not care if other people, what people say about your work. The best way to be confident is to not care about if people like your work. Care more if people can teach you how to be better, that's how you can be confident, okay? So that's what you can control. I always talk about, guys, that you have things in your control and out of your control, okay? What can you control? You can control how much you try to learn. You can control how much you study. You can control how much you practice. So focus on what you can control. You can control those things. So keep practicing. Keep trying to improve. Try to find people who will try to help you get better, okay? To honestly critique your work so you can get better. And don't just go online trying to get a validation from people that you're a good artist, okay? And that's how you're going to improve. That's how you're going to gain confidence. That's how you're going to set yourself up for a very long career, okay? So hopefully that helps. It was, again, one of those long convoluted answers. But it is something I'm passionate about because... Uh, all of us artists go through that. 
especially social media artists. Social media artists, that's the worst. Right? I get called ugly every day. And they're right. <laughs> you know, I get called a bad artist every day. And to them, they're right. Okay? So So that's that's uh that's what we got to do, guys. That's what we got to do. All right? Man, this is taking a long time, huh? I got to get I got to get some work done. I got to get some work done. I got to get some work done. So once again, guys, if you want to ask me a question, go to the community tab. Go to the community tab and ask your questions there. I will answer every single question in that community tab on uh, on my YouTube page, okay? Here we go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, good night, Michael. See, I knew you were up late. Oh, oh, Michael. Michael's the best. That's why Michael's the best. This is common. Good night, James and Chat. You're and you're a great artist and not ugly. Thank you, my friend. Woo! Hooray! Good night, my buddy. Good night, my friend. Okay. Hooray! I'm not ugly, guys. I'm not ugly. Unless you're going, yeah, James, you're not ugly. <laughs> oh, oh, that's okay. That's okay, guys. At my age, I'm, I'm a, a family man. You know, I'm not out there. You know, living the single life. No, no, I don't do that. I'm, a, I'm an old man now, my friends. All I care about these days is just uh, being here for my family, that, and that's it. And I'm totally happy with just that. So. It's okay if I'm ugly. You're ugly. You're ugly. Your mama says you ugly. <laughs> James is so ugly. He's ugly. <laughs> James is so ugly. He walked by. He walked by the bathroom and the toilet flushed itself. <laughs> Anyways, my friend, anyways. Yeah, so if you want to ask a question, ask in the community tab. Maybe I will uh maybe I will answer a few questions in the chat here. Why don't you guys go throw questions? Like again, I I'd prefer and I will give priority to the ones in the community tab. But uh, if you want to ask me a question, by all, by all means go ahead and ask me a question in the chat. I'm I'm feeling chatty today. I'm feeling chatty. I'm feeling particularly chatty. Isn't that that old uh, Rodney Dangerfield joke? I woke up, I told the doctor, I said, doctor, I looked in the mirror and I want to throw up. What's wrong with me? And he goes, I don't know, but your eyesight's perfect. I don't know. Your eyes, that's perfect. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's see here. No questions, guys? No questions? Uh, so here you go. Here's a question. Gabriel says, do you watch anime? And what's your favorite? I don't watch anime, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I really enjoyed Demon Slayer. I actually did. I, I enjoyed watching Demon Slayer. I watched Demon Slayer with my kids. And I enjoyed uh, what I watched. I didn't finish it, though. Because our intention was to watch it and then go watch the movie, uh, but we ended up not. I ended up not finishing it. I ended up finish, finishing it, but I, I haven't really had a. Uh... Oh, you know what? I just I realized I did the. I did the shoulder pads wrong, guys. I made a boo boo. I made a big big boo boo. Boo boo. I did the shoulder pads completely wrong. 
Well, you know my favorite saying, guys. It is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah, I messed up, guys. I messed up. I messed up. I drew the sh shoulder bad completely wrong, but it's okay. Because... Uh, I suck. <laughs> okay. So I, I did see a question here. Let me, let's me let go to further question here. From Elfarius came, came back again with another question. There you go. Uh, any advice on how to discover a new art style for beginning artists? I have no idea where to start. Well, again, uh, there's a great website where uh, you, you could actually find all of these uh, cool different art styles. I, I don't think I've ever told you guys this. Uh, there's this very, very cool website where you can actually discover a lot of these uh, brand new and cool and up and coming art styles. If you want to know what it is, uh, be ready to write it down. Make sure you write this website down because it's a little convoluted, okay? Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, it's spelled like this. Uh, G... O, O, G, <laughs> L, E, there you go. <laughs> old Gary V joke there, old Gary V joke. No, um, it's very easy. Uh, go to ArtStation. You can either go to ArtStation or you could go to um, or DeviantArt and just do some searching around. Searching around and, and see what kind of art styles, you know, that you like, okay? And then you could try it. Try drawing it. And I always say, um, don't just uh, try drawing the style yourself, but learn why they make those decisions. Why do they make the proportions that way? Why do they color in that style, right? Why do they ink that certain way, okay? The more you understand why people do artwork, as opposed to just trying to copy every line or every uh, color choice they make, the more you try to understand what they're trying to do or how they're executing the drawing, the more you can apply it to your own without having to copy it, okay? Uh, let's see, Vagabond fell for it. You actually wrote it down, Vagabond? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mario says Pinterest, okay? But whatever website, you know, literally. Just go in there, and then and then you can try it. And it's fun. You know, trying new art styles is a lot of fun. It really is. A lot of fun. So. So that's how I would develop art styles. By trying all sorts of art styles, having a full understanding of why, like, for example, the anime, anime style, why do they draw that way? Uh, how? Why do they, you know... How do they get such dynamic posing done? And see if there's a way you could include that in your own artwork, okay? And the way you draw. And then practice it enough where it's second nature to you. You don't even have to think about it. You don't have to look anything, all right? A lot of people ask how to, uh, how to draw without reference. Well, it's, it's practice. It's memory. The king, uh, you know, the late great King Kim Jong-gi never needed any reference when he was drawing those gigantic murals. He didn't look at anything. But that was because you know that and that was because they say his memory is actually unmatched. His memory. So it's studying. It's studying all these people's art. Like you could study Renaissance art. You know you could you know anime art. Even things like sculpture. There's a lot of things you can learn from sculpture. I'll, I'll tell you guys. I actually learned. I actually learned a lot about art. Or, uh, I actually got became I feel I became a better artist after I got into animation because when I started building um, uh, 3d models in Maya when I started uh, building models I had a whole new understanding about the way life works when I was building a model as opposed to trying to draw when I was trying to build life instead of draw it it, it was a quite a different experience for me it's completely different. And I thought about art in a completely different way after I did that. So it's definitely something uh, to consider, right? So try that. Uh, do photography. I would always say go. go. I always say, guys, photography is great for an artist. If you know how to do uh, take photos, not only will that help you as a YouTuber as well, that will definitely help you if you want to be a YouTuber. But taking photography, learning the way lighting works, you know, how to set up lights, like all that kind of stuff, that helps a lot. 
It helps a lot in developing your, your style. Okay? So I would also say you could also learn style not from artists. You could learn styles from other prof professions as well. So uh, definitely keep that kind of stuff in mind. Okay? And I just realized I didn't do the, uh, the thing in his nose. Of course I didn't. Lots of mistakes, the guys, guys. Lots of mistakes. Lots of mistakes. Okay. Next question. Next question. Les questions. Les questions. You got a question? What time is it now, guys? 6.42. Okay, I got a hard out at... So, again, guys, I have a hard out at uh, 7.45 my time. However, guys, in roughly about 18 minutes, for all of you guys watching right now, in roughly about 18 minutes, I have a brand new video that's coming out. A brand new video is coming out. Oh, Kieran's, you're right. Uh, Kieran's Sa? Kieran. Kieran Sa got it right, uh, but I think you're really an uh, alias for Bob Ross. You go, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. There you go. <laughs> so there you go. Are you ever going to do, New York asks, uh, do, are you ever going to do another lots of the same character but looks different drawings like 100 Batman or 100 Iron Man suits? Uh, not in the immediate future, buddy. Not in the immediate future. Uh, again, I think all the subjects that I wanted to do for that, I think I've done them already, that I'm genuinely interested in. And I'm not there just for the views. Uh, the ones I gem I'm genuinely like, I, I want to draw all of these guys' suits. Uh, I think I did that already. I think I did most of them already. Like, uh, if you would have asked me six months ago, I probably would have done a Black Panther one. I probably would have done one. But as of right now, I'm not really interested in doing like a 100-character drawing for now. Uh, uh, no, I'm sure I'll do another one again. I guarantee I'm probably going to do another one uh, again. It's just not right now. Like, no, right now, I just want to do these smaller drawings. Uh, you know, a lot more fun, a lot more easier to do, and doing them with you guys. So we'll see. Now, if there's one that I'm actually interested to do, I I think I would love to do like a like the Mortal Kombat one. That that interests me a lot. I'd love to do a Mortal Kombat one. Um, but we'll see. Okay, so let's let's work on the other shoulder pad here, guys. We're gonna do shoulder, shoulder time. You know, there's a lot of in interpretation with Warhammer, so I don't feel too bad that uh, I I keep making mistakes, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Let me uh go to the questions here. Let me re refresh. So next question here. Uh, Knuckle Sam, once again, says, do you have still plans to interview other artists in the future? Which artists would you love to interview? I had a fun time with doing the podcast. And part of me, like I look actually, actually look back at that at that that uh, podcast channel. That that channel had a lot of potential. It really did. I you know, and, and actually in a way, I wish that I stuck to the plan. But we were kind of struggling on the main channel, so I had to pull all our resources to the main channel because, uh, you know, blessing and a curse. We we had so many brand deals coming in at that particular this around this time last year. Uh, we had so many brand deals coming in that I needed so much help on the on the main channel that I took everybody off the uh, their the channels they were working on. Like Joe was working on the um, on the uh, reaction channel. Uh, Mark was working on the uh, Mark was working on the podcast channel, doing a fantastic job. And I'm looking back at those videos now, and I think those videos helped so many would have helped so many people for sure. The, the podcast, all of that, like it, I, you know, I was very proud of what we did, what we were able to do in the amount of time we did it. But then we were just trying to concentrate on getting the main channel to, to, you know, uh, to a better level than what it was, right? Like we, we did have a goal of like trying to hit 2 million this year. That's not going to happen uh, anymore. 
Let's hope we can keep it at 1.5 <laughs> for all I know, with all the subscribers I'm losing, but that's okay. Uh, but uh, the podcast channel, the, like it was exciting. And I got to talk, like, guys, if you want to be a comic book artist, go listen to that Jim Zub interview. I love that Jim Zub interview. Uh, my friend Paul Shipper, his interview, if you want to get into commercial art, like they gave like invaluable, invaluable advice. Invaluable. Like, you want to learn how to get a job in those professions. Talk to the people who actually did it, right? And they were awesome, right? Like, and, you know, I was going to interview, of course, my buddy Anthony Francisco and my buddy Anthony Park and, and David Finch, all of which, uh, whom you've seen on this channel before. But, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, I pulled it off. And I would love to, to keep doing the podcast. Like, it was a lot of fun. And I told you guys, like, you know, I, my, I was originally thinking about the first few live streams. I actually recorded what I, what I was talking about nice and cleanly, and I put it up on the podcast channel. But I didn't see, realize how expensive it is to put up a daily to – to actually put up a daily three-hour podcast, guys. It, it will cost me at least uh, 200 bucks a month, which is fine if you're, if you're making Joe Rogan money. Not if you're making James Ray's money, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, one day, if you guys like really, really demand that I, I, I record this and make it a, to a podcast, then I will. Uh, or or the, the demand has to be there. But uh, for me to make that investment of uh, 200 bucks a month to do that, it's like, mm, maybe not right now. Maybe not right now. I'll just, uh, it gives me one thing less to concentrate on, but, um, in terms of people I'd love to talk to and interview, uh, one Brian Hitch, Brian Hitch actually agreed to do the podcast. Eh? He actually did. He agreed to do the podcast. Um, who else? Uh, Joe Quesada. I would love to interview Joe Quesada. And pick his brain as being the, the top guy at Marvel. Like even C.B. Sabuski. C.B. Sabuski, who probably would have done it. Now now I'm thinking about it now, man. I should have asked him. I should have asked C.B. Um, C.B. Sabuski is the uh, editor-in-chief at Marvel right now. So I would love to interview C.B. Uh, because also C.B. has been very good to me. And I told you guys that, like we we talked before about how a CB offered me a Spider Man job, like way 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 back in the day. Um, so I would have loved to talk to CB, uh, and also because like I know you guys could learn from him, right? You guys will learn a lot from it. So uh, let me ask you guys, who would you like to see me uh, interview? Because, uh, you know, I, I wanted to do artists from all genres of art. I would have liked to, uh, for example, I would have liked to interview Beeple. If you guys know who Beeple is, he was the one who kind of started this NFT craze, right? He was the one who sold his uh, NFT uh, digital art for like, uh, what was it, like $70 million? Seven, when do you hear an artist, digital traditional artist, Make seventy million dollars off a piece, wait, when? And then, unfortunately, that started the gold rush, right? That started the gold rush, and then everyone and their mother wanted to be an NFT artist. And there were some even kids that were super successful. Like you, you hear about those kids in in Asia that uh, were making millions of dollars doing NFT art. I got my buddies, like my buddy Vex, pretty much an NFT artist now. Uh, my buddy, my well, I was not my buddy. I don't know him that well. But Arnold Sang, who I mentioned before, worked with me at Dreamwave. Uh, he quit his job to go work uh, at an NFT company. Uh, my buddy Anthony Francisco, you guys know Anthony. Uh, he works at an NFT company now. He quit his job at Marvel to work at an NFT company now. So, uh, so definitely that that would be one. Uh, do I like Olivier Copiel? I love his stuff. Absolutely love his stuff. Fantastic. Uh, Jim Lee, definitely Jim Lee. I would like, you know, so many questions from my buddy Jim Lee. Uh, my buddy Francis, Francis Manipal. Uh, my buddy Francis, 
uh, he lives he lives very close to me, Francis Manipal. Uh, he, he actually has a fantastic. If you guys want to be a comic book artist and want to know what's really like to be a real comic book artist, go follow my friend Francis. Francis, uh, he's he's doing some wonderful things on YouTube now as well. Some great great stuff. So go follow go follow Francis. Francis is amazing. Uh, Alex Ross. Love to interview Alex, Alex Ross. He'd probably do it too, you know, with fellow YouTubers. You know, Alex Ross would have, uh, I'm pretty sure Alex would have uh, done, done an interview. So, uh, Rob Liefeld, yes, yes. It's, a, it's Liefeld, right? Rob, Rob Liefeld. Would absolutely love to interview Rob Liefeld, for sure. I met Rob Liefeld briefly at Alamo Comic Con. Because uh, he was at a table across from me. Because we both had gigantic tables. And I went up to him and I said, a big fan. And, you know, and he said he liked my work because you can't miss it. The mural was right there. But then again, you know, I'm sure he's just saying that to be nice. You know, you know just want me to get out of there. Like, you, you're buying something? Okay, get out of here. Your work's great. Get out of here. <laughs> Not, just joking. No, no. But Rob was great. Rob, Rob was a nice, very, very nice guy. You know, the thing, uh, the thing with Rob Liefeld, guys, um, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Rob Liefeld is, of course, for, for you youngins might not know this, Rob Liefeld is uh, the creator of Deadpool. He created Deadpool. A very high, he was one of the more, he was definitely one of the superstar artists back in the 90s. He was, when we talked about rock star artists, like back in the 90s, guys, Image Comics boom, uh, in the Image Comics boom, like comic book artists were literally rock stars. Image Comics artists, the image coming, the founders, literally rock stars. When they went to conventions, like they were the they were the super, they were the rock man. They they were the superstars. Like talk about super duper duper stars. That that was the comic book artists. See, I made a mistake again on this shoulder pad. I suck today. I suck today, guys. I suck. Get the get the details right. And again, the, this is the, the hard part about uh, going straight to ink. It's like I can't fix it anymore. Like, oh. Well, at the very least, if I'm, if I'm going to make a mistake on the outfit, at least it's going to look cool. At least it's going to look cool. But anyway. But even just to, to figure out what that was like back in the day. It'd be very, very interesting. Uh, Ryan Myandering, I'd love to. I never met Ryan, uh, Ryan Myandering. Ryan, Ryan Myandering, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, he is the lead uh, concept artist at Marvel right now. So I, th I think him and Andy pretty much have the same position. But for the longest time, it was just uh, Ryan who had that position. But now, of course, they have to separate all the movies. They have so much content coming on right now that they need a lot more leads now. But Ryan, uh, like he definitely was one of them. Uh, I would love to interview Bl Boss Logic. I have a lot of questions for Boss Logic. Uh, I would love to have interviewed him and learned from him. Like, talk about Boss Logic is like the quintessential uh, influencer artist. I would call him that. Like, like an artist, 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 right? He is the quintessential uh, rose to fame off social media. He was the dude. To where celebrities and all that stuff, they started following him, right? Uh, because of the stuff he was doing online. Like, he is the quintessential uh, internet artist that blew up because of, uh, you know, because of what he did on the internet. So, I would love to pick his brain, Boss Logic. You know, when I was, um, if you guys don't remember this, like a lot of you OGs of yours on my channel would know this. Uh, when I first quit my job years ago, uh, what I did was I, I had this, I, I put, made this sign that I put up on my wall. And, you know, just to give me a bit of motivation. And I put three people that inspired me uh, creatively on the creative side. Because I have my inspiration spiritually. I have spiritual and inspirational leaders. But in terms of the creative side, People that I was like, I wanted to be like them. I had three names on there. Three names on there. The first one was Jazza, my mentor. 
The second one was John Campia. Uh, you guys know John Campia, and I show I showed him that picture too. He, he was really touched when I showed him that picture. Uh, I also had the number five thousand because that's how much money I was losing a month five thousand dollars a month for quitting my job to try to pursue this full time. That's how much money I was losing. And uh, a name, another name, Boss Logic. So those were the three names: Jazza, John Campia, Boss Logic. Those were the three that I had written up on my wall, and I would see it every single day. Uh, so when you know, just to give me that extra push I needed to try to get through the hard times. That's what I did. Okay, take care, Mario. Thanks, thanks for holding the fort, buddy. Thanks for holding the fort. So yeah. So I even forgot what I was talking about, guys. Uh, that's a, that's old age, guys. That's old age. Oh, so we were talking about podcasts, right? Yeah. So those are guys I would love to interview uh, for the podcast. So okay, guys, if you have any other questions, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any other, any other questions here. It says I, I'm still sad. I messed this up, this shoulder up. I really am. Uh, have I done uh, Mario before he left? He said, "Have I done uh, 100 Marvel villains?" Uh, no, not yet. If I'm not mistaken, did I do Spider-Man villains? I, I forgot. See, I don't even remember. It's old age, guys. I don't remember what I did. I don't remember what I did. Don't get old like me, guys. Don't get old like me. There's no more music. I just realized there's no more music. Next time, guys, uh, let me know if the music stops, and then I'll uh, put on some new music. Let's try uh, what cinematic score. That sounds interesting. That sounds cinematic score. I want things to be cinematic. Okay, I have no idea what the music sounds like, guys, so you can let me know. All right. Now, let's uh, get back to this. Let's get back to this drawing here. Let's uh, do this arm. We're going to do this arm. And I wish I had a voice like uh, Markiplier. You know, Markiplier, is, he is one of the best voices. Oh, yeah, I don't want to like a corpse husband voice. Corpse husband's like... <laughs> Uh, hey guys, hey, it's me, Corpse Husband. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, everybody, hey, everybody, hey, it's me. I'm here. <laughs> no, though, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Markiplier's voice. I, I really like Markiplier's voice. He's got like that soothing voice. And you know who else has a soothing voice? Uh, Michelle Fawn. She has a really soothing voice. She's like, they got great uh, voiceover voices, right? Hi, this is James, the box office artist. Hello. I, I gotta add more bass to the voice, right? Yeah. Hello. My name is the Box Office Artist, and today we are drawing Warhammer. It's hammer time. <laughs> it's hammer time. You you want to? You, I have never felt so old when uh, you know Vid Summit just happened. If you guys don't know what Vid Summit, it is a summit for uh, creators. Okay. And I was actually able to watch uh, the replays of uh, Vid7. And then uh, one creator came up there and gave a speech. And I think he was talking about staying uh, relevant. Oh, new videos up, guys. New videos up. New videos up. Okay, if you want to hear me tell my story, please stay. But if you want to, go watch the new video. Go. Go watch the new video. Go watch the new video. I'm drawing a Lego... Uh, Black Panther mech. Go watch it, guys. Go watch it. It's okay. I'll wait. It's okay. Go, go, and I'll, I'll just tell this story. But I never felt so old watching it because this guy just started going off on a singer uh, from the late 90s, early, or no, I wouldn't say from the 90s. His name's MC Hammer. I was a gigantic Hammer fan. Hammer. Too legit to quit, man. Too legit to quit. <laughs> too legit too legit too quick hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> too legit too legit too quick 
uh, I I loved Hammer. I loved Hammer. And then he goes, there's this uh, guy. His name's uh, MC Hammer. He must have been like a... The way he was talking. He, he must have been like a, a musician or something back in the day. It was like a one-hit wonder musician. He wasn't a one-hit wonder. He's a, one, he's a one-hit wonder musician. I'm giving this guy a voice because I'm jealous because he's got billions of subscribers. But... And uh, and he was just saying the ways that he he uh, he he became irrelevant, quote unquote irrelevant. And you know he gave a, actually uh, to this creator he gave a, a extremely helpful speech, especially to me. So uh, I just make make fun in jest. But I never felt so old when uh, these guys were talking about MC Hammer that way. Never felt so old. Like there's this guy. He's like his name's MC Hammer. He must have been some sort of like a singer back in the nineties. And uh, it's what, like a one-hit wonder, yeah. It's like a like a like a, wow, like a one one-hit wonder. <laughs> and uh, the whole time I'm like, I'm an old man. I am an old man. Oh yeah, yeah. Carrie, Carrie's got it. Carrie knows. Carrie knows. Favorite MC Pr Hammer song is "Pray." That's right. Yeah, Harry knows. You know, it went like this: Pray, pray. You've got to pray just to make it today. That's why we pray. <laughs> pray. Oh, man. Hammer. Brings me back, guys. Brings me back. Please, Hammer, don't hurt him. Do you know that? You guys know that song? Do, 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 can't touch this. Do, 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 can't touch this. Do, 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 do. My, 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 my music hits me so hard, makes me say. Okay, never mind. A lot of you youngins are like, what's wrong with this old man? Talking about a one hit wonder we've never heard about in our lives. Oh, James, you're old. You're an old guy. Talking about musicians we've never heard of. <laughs> so that's why I call me Uncle James, guys. I'm your, I'm your, uh, I'm your cool uncle. Call me your cool uncle. That's what I want to be now. I've decided this uh, next part of my YouTube career. I want to be the cool art uncle. That's what I want to be. Okay, so I am your cool art uncle, Uncle James. There you go, Uncle James, the cool art uncle. Wait a minute. Didn't the cool art uncle draw that? Yeah, that's right. It's me, your Uncle James. The cool art uncle. All right, guys, can I be that? I'll be your cool art uncle. There you go. Doom, do, do, doom, 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 touch this doom, do, do, doom. James Ray's the cool art uncle. There you go. Hey, James, you need to do a piece with Uncle Roger. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> I see, I don't even want to do an Uncle Roger impression. I could I'm probably I probably could get away with it. I'm Asian. I could do an Uncle Roger impression. I could do an Uncle Roger, but I'm not going to. Because it's the right thing to do. There you go. <laughs> But that's Uncle Roger. I'm just the cool art uncle. Maybe I should change uh, the name of this channel. The Box Office Artist Uncle. Box Office Artist Uncle. There you go. Uh, nice to be here, my friend, JJ. Nice to be here, my friend. There you go. I am the cool art uncle. Oh, Uncle Art. You could call me Uncle Art. Nah, I don't like Uncle Art. I'm James. Uncle James. The cool art uncle. That's going to be the name of my channel now. The cool aunt uncle, Uncle James. There you go. Do 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 dum, boom boom. Get touch this. Do 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 dum, do dum dum I'm not saying that, Kyle Bob. I'm I'm not saying that. No canceling today, my friend. <laughs> Today is not a good day to get canceled. I'm not saying that. Let Uncle Roger say that. 
Today is not a good day. I don't think anyone wakes up and says, today's a good day to get canceled. There you go. <laughs> oh, boy. There you go. See, Knuckle Sandwich is Malaysian, so he, he could do the Uncle Roger confession. I prefer not to. I will just sit back and enjoy his content. The Uncle Roger content. I will just sit back and enjoy it. Let Uncle Roger do his thing. Well, I do my thing, being the uh, being the uh, the art uncle, the art uncle. There you go. Uh, any other questions, dudes? Do you guys have any other questions? Let's see here. Oh, no new questions here. No new questions here. Let's see. Uh, uh, well, well, white. Yes, I have no idea who that is. I apologize, my friend. Uh, let's see here. Uh, half. What's your largest piece ever? Oh, the first Star Wars mural. That's definitely the largest piece I've ever done. Definitely. I've never done any murals or anything like that. In terms of like like wall murals, I've never done anything like that. But uh, definitely the um, the original. Now the uh, let's see the official mural I did for Marvel. I think actually technically that's bigger. I take that back. You're, you're right. Technically, that is bigger. The, the your art mural I did officially for Marvel. It's like a officially, well, we call it official fan art. Just to uh, cross the I's and dot the T's. Uh, cross the I's and dot the T's. Cross the T's and dot the I's. You know, cross the I's and dot the T's, right? Cross the T's and dot the I's. Um... Because that particular piece, that was how many boards? Eight times nine, 72 comic book boards. So 72 of these papers. 72 of these pieces of paper. That's how big uh, that particular mural was. That's why I would love for Lucasfilm to actually uh, say, James, you want to bring that to the museum? Hi, James. I don't know why I give... Uh... I don't know why I gave the uh, the Lucasfilm uh, the Lucasfilm uh, Museum uh, a Filipino accent, uh, but James, uh, why don't you uh, bring that uh, to the museum? You want to bring it uh, to the museum? There you go, bring it to the museum. This uh, this uh, artwork. Why aren't you a doctor, James? You should you should uh, be a doctor. Make your uh, dad proud. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Why don't uh, you make your uh, dad proud, huh? huh? Make him proud. Make him proud, huh? James, hey, James. Okay, anyway. Sorry, I got a little... Get off on a little tangent there. There you go. There you go. Uh, Let's go back to here. Going back and forth on this drawing. This is a lot of fun, though. I, I'm enjoying this drawing because it's something new. It's definitely something new. Though I am going a lot slower than I usually do, I mean again, again mainly because I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to work out issues. So, for example, the hand here, because he's got like all these uh, bullets and stuff too. That that's pretty awesome. I think that's pretty awesome. You should talk like this all the time, Kieran says. Oh, okay, Kieran, huh? Eat bullet. Knuckle Sandwich wants me to eat bullet. I I like the bullet. Uh, this uh. This uh, duck egg, you know the duck egg, you know that one, uh, the duck egg, it, uh, it, uh, it starts to grow, and then we cook it, <laughs> and then we take the duck, duck egg and uh, we cook it, and then we eat it, we eat it. It's good with the vinegar. The duck egg. It's good with the vinegar. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I, went, I went off on a tangent there. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, balut, don't, don't Google it, but it's a Filipino delicacy. Balut is a uh, Filipino delicacy, my friends. Balut uh, is a duck. Uh, it, it literally is a duck egg that... Is a little bit more developed than usual. Let's just say that, and then we cook it. Now there's uh there's degrees of development 
Let's just say that there's degrees of development when you end up eating it. But you know, it's just like this, right? We we eat, uh, we eat chicken and we eat eggs. Let's call this the in between. That's what that is. The in between. That's the balloon eggs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh. Huh? Uh, I will answer Werewolf Gamer's uh, comment here. I won't actually say the comment, but I will say this. Uh, Werewolf Gamer. The game has changed. And I always tell you guys, never, ever, at this point in time, YouTube has changed everything. Everything's changed. Everything's changed to the point where um, subscribers don't matter anymore. I... I know that that is the only metric where they give a reward. That is the only metric where they give a reward. So I understand why people want those play buttons. Okay. So, but if we are 100% honest, this day and age, the way that YouTube is right now, subscribers don't matter anymore. I know guys with 70,000 subscribers that are getting. 10 times my views, overall views, right? And 20 times the engagement with literally uh, like a, a, you know, 5% of my subscribers, okay? Um, but that's why you see people fall off, right? And, I'm, and that's one thing I should have said when um, also when uh, someone asked earlier about the pitfalls about being an artist, guys, it doesn't last long. YouTube doesn't last long. What was hot a year ago, why people subscribe a year ago, a lot of them aren't into that content anymore. People change. What was hot a year ago isn't hot today. So to evolve and change uh, over time, it's hard. You even think to yourself, uh, YouTubers you well used to watch a few years ago even. Like, even like two, three years ago, how many of them are still doing YouTube now? Let me ask you that. Where's Rice Gum, guys? Where's Rice Gum? What happened to that dude? He was like the hottest YouTuber in the world. Where is he? Where's Rice Gum? Like, all these creators. You get guys like uh, Epic Mealtime, right? Epic Mealtime. I love Epic Mealtime even to this day. But you see their views now compared to when they were at their hottest right now. There's a, there's a shelf life to being a YouTuber, guys. I would love to say it's like uh, you can make this job like a 20-year job. 20-year job. Uh, but I would love to say it's like a 20-year job, but it's not. But you think about it, it's like actors too, right? Your favorite actors, to actually make a long career as an actor, it takes someone really special to do that. Or as a singer. How many singer guys you followed five years ago that don't sing anymore, that don't make content anymore? It's tough. It's tough to keep it up, right? So that's the import, unfortunate part about YouTube. And again, a lot of you guys want to be YouTubers. As of right now, it's not a long-term gig, man. Because you could be the hot stuff one year. You, you could be. And then you could be irrelevant the next year. It happens so fast. And there's so many uh, YouTubers out there right now that are experiencing that. And the thing is, for TikTokers, guys, for TikTokers, it happens faster than YouTubers. And Mr. Beast Manager warns, warned everyone about that. He's like, a lot of these TikTokers, they're growing too fast. Their audience aren't loyal. And what's going to happen when they lose everything they, they are used to, right? So that's, that's what's uh, worried about it, you know? So in terms of people actually watching these streams, that's fine. I, I expected that. I expected uh, not many people watching these things. And that's fine. and Because it's, it's not about that anymore for me. YouTube is now a hobby for me. It's not my main uh, source of income anymore. Okay? So I'm going to go on here and I'm going to do what I want to do. And if... Uh, People want to watch, great. If they don't, that's fine too. That's fine too. Because even ask yourself now, and I said this a few days ago, ask yourself now, how many of you actually go to your subscription feed when you watch a video? How many of you actually watch 
go to your subscription feed. Now, some of you do. A lot of you do. But there was a poll done where it turned out four out of five, four out of five people go to their homepage to watch a video instead of their subscription feed. I look at my subscription feed right now, guys. My subscription feed is full of shorts. Even me, I don't want to go to my subscription feed. It's full of shorts. And then I'll get the odd one or two like full videos. If I want to watch a full video, I go to my homepage. I try to find it there. Or if there's someone specifically, then I'll actually go and search for it. So YouTube's changed. The game has changed. I wouldn't call it an agenda. Well, oh, if you want to call it an agenda, you know what the agenda is? They want more people to watch. And they find that just because someone subscribed doesn't mean they're going to watch your channel. So even so, for all of you guys, guys, all of you guys here, I will tell you right now. And uh, M M Must has mainly goes to the subscription feed. You you are one of the few. Knuckle sandwich. There's a subscription feed. Because <laughs> even on TikTok, guys, even on TikTok, like I follow these people, but I don't go to the follow tab when I watch on. Do you? When you go to TikTok, do you go to the follow tab? Do you go to the follow tab? When you're uh, when you're scrolling on TikTok, I don't. I just turn on TikTok and I just start start scrolling. I don't do that. I don't do that. The game has changed. Where people people watch what the algorithm shows them now. That's why all these the biggest YouTubers in the world. It's all about algorithm hacking. Okay, it's not about the subscription feed anymore. And that's why I think eventually they're going to change the re they're going to change the rewards. They're not going to reward subscriptions anymore. I really believe that. I think they're going to reward things like views. Like some people are saying maybe watch time and stuff. That nobody, Nobody's going to get. It's not uh, quote unquote uh, uh, pretty. That's not the pretty award. You know, that's not the award people want. Oh, I got the most watch time. It's not the most uh, nice sounding. Even though to us YouTubers, we know what that means. We know what that means. But to uh, the regular folk, they know what views are. I really think that YouTube should change their their goals, their subscription instead of giving play buttons to sub people with the most subscribers. Because back then, yes, if you had the most subscribers, they actually watch your content. Now, not so much. So, I would say YouTube should change their model, not from subscriptions. And this is government coming from a guy with 1.5 million subscribers. They should change it. Change it from subscribers to views. What that uh, ratio looks like, I don't know. That's not for me to decide. Like, I have my thoughts, but it's not just for me to decide. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, the fact that uh, only a few people are watching these streams on, on my main channel, doesn't matter. It doesn't phase me at all. I, I don't really care anymore. Now, if you ask me, uh, and, and I'll, you know what? 100% honest with you guys, too. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, and this is what it's all about, being honest with each other. If I'm 100% honest, too, the reason I had a separate channel for the live streams is because I was a little embarrassed. I was a little embarrassed that none, not many people actually watch the live streams. And I'm telling you, when I did live streams on this channel before, when I did live streams on this channel before, there were way more people watching than there are now, right? And now I'd be like, oh man, that would have been a lot if I did it now. But again, just because someone subscribed, you know, you could just have had like a viral video. And they always say viral video, having a viral video, it's actually a bad thing for newer creators. I grew because I had viral video after viral video after viral video. That's what happened to me. I had like five viral videos in a row, all with different subject matters. So the people who saw those videos, a lot of people who saw those particular videos, they subscribed to me for different reasons. And that's a bad way to grow, guys. I'm telling you right now. Here's a little YouTube advice. Here's a little YouTube advice. Don't just think because someone something went viral that that's a good thing. Okay? It's a good thing because we love seeing the numbers going up. But what happened was people subscribed to me for different reasons. Meaning when I had a video out, meaning they wouldn't watch every video. They would only watch videos that were related to what they subscribed for. And that's what they should be, they should be doing. But they wouldn't watch every video. 
They would only watch the type of video that they subscribe for, which is what they should be doing. You guys, when you are starting out YouTube right now, when you guys are starting off YouTube right now, and I'm going to tell you this right now, guys, if you are, a lot of you want to be YouTubers, work on building a community, okay? Don't try to fast track it. Build people who are, you know, grow by getting quote unquote fans or followers that are actually genuinely interested in you and what you're doing, okay? That's how you can have a long career. That's how you have supportive fans. Viral isn't necessarily the way to go, okay? It's about building every single day, okay? And that's what I'm going to be doing. You know what? And I'm going to be the guinea pig pick for that, okay? Because right now, it's no more longer about algorithm hacking for me. This is about me hanging out with you guys and whoever wants to hang out with us in the morning, okay? That's what it's about now, all right? It's not about trying to get a million views every single video anymore, okay? So that's what we were going to do. See, Knuckle Sandwich watches all my videos. I appreciate that, my friend. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. I know you don't have time uh, from Colton's Kitchen. I don't have time, but I'll answer it anyways. But I, I want to ask you, I want you to read out loud. Could someone who has time count how many strokes <laughs> are in the first and last most detailed drawing ever to determine which is more detailed? The first one, definitely. Guaranteed, first one. For, you know, most detailed drawing ever, that's just a, a what's it called? Marketing ploy. It's marketing. Marvel style is marketing. Life is about marketing, guys. What will capture people's attention? Okay, what will capture people's attention? Clickbait! Because both of them aren't the most detailed. You, you, when, when you live up live in an age with guys like Jeff Darrow and Kim Jong-gi, you really think my artwork is more detailed than that? I don't know. I'm not going to claim that, but it is. That's why I preface it with, I think. I think. That's how I preface it. That's why it's not clickbait. That's why it's not clickbait. So, there you go. I drew this a lot slower than I thought I would. And well, can I say that? I drew this a lot slower than I thought I would. But then again, I'm talking a lot today. Talking a lot. Will I do uh, our Ash Wolfgang says, will you do some tutorials in the future? I, again, I mentioned probably not. The best way for you guys to learn right now from me. Okay. The reason I won't do it, I'll be 100% honest. I'm not going to do it unless I'm 100% into it. And it's just not something I'm, uh, I'm uh, interested in doing right now. It's just like sit down. Okay, draw this line here. Draw this line there. You know, it's just not something I want to do. So if I did do that, it would be for the wrong reasons. It would either be to try to make some money. It would be, you know... It would be for the wrong reasons if I ended up making uh, uh, tutorials. So, but I will say the best way to learn from me right now is to watch my live stream and ask me questions about what I draw and why I do things and why I make certain decisions. That's your better bet than me actually doing tutorials at this point. At this point. And I'm not saying that won't happen in the future, but uh, definitely uh, could. Okay. Definitely could. All right. Uh, knuckle sandwich. Not using a French curve? Nope. Threw them out. No, I did throw them out. I just can't find them. So now I'll be honest, I didn't do as much work as I thought I would have done today. I thought I would have been way further than this. I, I think it's because this particular uh, subject matter, it's new to me, and there's a lot more detail going on. Like, 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 let's be honest, Sonic's easy. It's just muscles, right? It's just muscles. But this particular one, there's so much going on, so much things I have to think about, and it's a subject matter I'm not familiar with. That's why this is taking me way longer than, than I expected. So even I expected it to be faster than this. I expected that. So, What time is it, guys? Okay, guys, I literally only have 20 minutes right now. 20 minutes. So I was hoping to at least finish this guy. Let's see if I can at least get... Okay, I'm going to try to go a little bit more rapid fire here, guys. Okay. Just uh, trying to get my reference going here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hello. Hello everyone. 
So let's see if there's any more questions. I, I doubt there's any more questions here. Oh, there is another question here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go with new questions. Here. Knuckle sandwich. Were there any ever? Okay, this is this is a very interesting question here. Okay, so I will answer it. Were there any challenges being Asian growing up in Canada? I'm asking because I had challenge being half Asian growing up in Australia. Okay, I'm, you know what? I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, okay? Because that's what this is about, honesty. The answer is no. Not that I'm aware of right now, okay? Uh, I have been very lucky to live in an area that is very much a melting pot where there's lots of cultures around, okay? I have never faced uh, the, um, the challenges that a lot of people I know faced when they were growing up. Okay? Now, my uh, father-in-law faced a lot of it. He faced a lot of uh, racism when uh, he got to Canada. My dad, uh, he, if he did, he never told me about it. If he did, he never told me about it. Uh, if he had a hard time because he was Asian. Me, growing up, first of all, you know, I grew up with a lot of Asians because, uh, you know, in my church, there's a lot of Asians in my church. Uh, also, at school, I was living in an area where there were a lot of different cultures in my, screw, in my school. Uh, I grew up with a lot of uh, East Indians. With a lot of uh, uh, Indian friends, right? So that's why I'm very comfortable uh, with my my fans from India uh, being here because I grew up with a lot of Indians growing up. Uh, wonderful people, you know. I, I got to know their culture. You know, they they invite me over to their house all the time. So I never felt the uh, you know I never felt any racism. Okay. I never felt any challenges because I'm Asian, okay? You know, maybe maybe the, maybe the biggest extent would be like little things like oh, maybe yeah, like a like a you know, some dude would try to push it in front of me because they're bigger than me. But I think that's also a size thing. You guys know, for those of you who know me, I'm not I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I'm the biggest guy. Biggest guy. But I'm not the biggest guy in the world. But yeah, I never really faced it. Now, uh, that's because I live in a very big city. Toronto is the fourth biggest city in North America. So it's a very, very much a melting pot of a city. It's always had, we call it melting pot because there's lots of different cultures here. So I, I was lucky to live in this area. So, you know, shout out to my parents for coming here when they did. But also, uh, like my, my buddy, he went up north. In northern Canada, and he said, and they just said it's different there. Like they look at Asians completely different over there. Like um, uh, I have a buddy who dated a, dated someone up there, and the family just treated him really poorly. You know, so I'm not a denier that it happens. Like I know it happens because I I met so many people that uh, it affected them very much so, very much so. But for me. Uh, the only time I felt a little bit of it was for, for a weird reason in Pittsburgh. When I was in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, I went to this restaurant, uh, cause it was near the outlet mall. Uh, and we were the only Asians in that place and no, nobody said anything to us or treated us differently. But it was just a vibe. You know, when you get a vibe that something's wrong and people were staring at us and it was just weird. Like I never felt something like that before. So if I was see if, if there was anything close to that, that would be there. Okay. But no, I've been very blessed that uh, being Asian in Canada or where I live right now, no, didn't really affect me at all. Didn't really affect me at all. Cause I'll be honest. I go to my, my daughter's school right now and my daughter's school, like it's, it's full of uh, Caucasian people. But they're all, uh, but they're all foreign, like they're all from Europe. So they all speak different languages. I speak English better than they all do, <laughs> right? But they're the Caucasian people. But I'm the one without the accent. Or well, you, you, you tell me or not, but you know, the accent I have, right? 
Can I ask you guys, do I have an accent? Do I have a Canadian accent? Can I ask you guys that? Does it sound like I have a Canadian accent? So, uh, but uh, to answer the other guy's question there, uh, I forgot who asked. It wasn't a question, it's comment. If I was really into trying to make YouTube a real thing for me, like if I was trying to blow up to those levels, yes, you're absolutely right. I should only be doing content that they subscribe for. You're 100% right. It's not about that anymore. It's not. Okay. So there you go. Uh, hi, Lil Glitchy. Says, hi, box officers. You're a huge inspiration to me. And this is my first stream of your. I caught so far. It looks amazing. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, Christmas says, I have a Canadian or American accent. I appreciate that. My friend. See, the thing is, with Canada, I, I think they say that the biggest difference... Well, you know, even, even in the U.S., the, uh, there's varying accents in the U.S., right? Of course, you get your more southern accent. You have a Texas accent. You have a New York accent. You have a California-style accent. Like, there's so many different ones in the U.S. And then you got a Canadian accent. You know, things like... They say things like a boot or whatever that what that is. I personally haven't... I don't think I say it that way. Because that's the thing about an accent. You don't know you talk that way. You don't know. It's just because other people don't talk that way. They say, oh, yeah, you talk differently than we do. So it's one of those type of things. Uh, let's see here. Bob, my friend Bob, the, pter the pterodactyl with the silent P. There you go. How did you get so good at drawing? When and how did your passion for drawing start? Um, I've always been drawing. I always say that. If someone twists my arm, I'll say three years old. But as far as I know, I've always been drawing. Um, I, I didn't realize that art should be my career. Until my last year of high school. I've always wanted to draw. I love drawing. I drew whenever I could, but I never thought I would make it a career. I always thought it would just be a hobby. But it wasn't until my last year of high school. It wasn't until my last year of high school that I, I took a step back and I said to myself, man, I, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. Like the old Asian thing. I, I, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be an artist. I want to make my art doing art. I, I mean, I want to make my money doing art. I don't, I don't want to be a doctor. And that's when it's all switched. That's when all my life decisions came, my final year of high school. Okay? So that, that's my common answer, though. So. The word sorry determines if you're Canadian or not. Okay? If you actually say sorry. There you go. Uh, you think I could finish it in 10 hours, Tessa? Maybe. But again, guys, I do have a hard out in roughly about 15 minutes or 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, okay? I have a hard out in 10 minutes, and I should have been done this this part by now. I should have been done this. Um, I guess talking too much. James, you talk too much. I do. I talk too much. But I'm trying to I'm trying to entertain the people. That's you, my people. You are my people. Because, you know, I, I could just, to be honest, you know, these streams, I could just, like, leave the music on and then just draw, not even look at the comments. But where's the fun in that? Part of this whole thing that we're trying to do here, it's about the community. It's about you guys and hanging out with you and answering your questions. Uh, you know, your chance to ask a guy, not only with, the, you know, what, how many subscribers, right? That, that's actually secondary. You're talking to a guy with over 20 years of professional art experience. That's done it all. Well, I won't say all, but I have an experience in, in a lot of uh, a lot of art fields, and I and I teach. You know, I'm a college professor. I I taught art in college. So if there's anyone you could ask your questions to and, and possibly learn from, I I think it's me. So I want you to ask your questions. This is your time to uh, pick my brain, as we say. And no nonsense. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to tell you that it's all uh, sun and roses, okay? Because life's not like that. And, and if someone tells you that, if all they give you is life can be sun and roses, they're, they're lying to you. They are. Because it's definitely not. Life's hard. Being an artist is hard, as fun as it is. As much as you like to draw, there's always hard parts to it. Always.
There's always hard parts to life, okay? And hopefully I can help you guys out. And that, that's all I could ask for, okay? And if this stream can help you in that way, let's let's do it. Let's go for it. And I apologize for my talking. Like, um, I'm hoping to improve in terms of how I talk also to you guys. So, uh, there you go. My sorry sounds different. Okay, maybe I watch too much TV, my friends. <laughs> Bob says... Thank you. You decided not to be a doctor because I wouldn't have been able to see this absolutely amazing art you do. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. You know, if you are an artist, maybe you could be like a plastic surgeon, right? Because that's kind of art, right? You're you're reshaping somebody's face and somebody's nose and their face <laughs> all that. <laughs> maybe that would have been a better job for the artist. You still want to be a doctor? Yeah, be, be like a plastic surgeon. There you go. Maybe I should have been a plastic surgeon. Maybe. There you go. That's what I should have done. So. Knuckle Samus says, we're here for your talking. There you go. <laughs> I appreciate that, my friend. Uh, let's see. Any more comments, guys? Let's see here. No comments. Uh, no, no more comments. Okay. So we, we are coming down to the end of it soon anyway, guys. Like, literally, I would have loved to kept going. Like, if I didn't have something to do this morning, I would have went going until at the very least we were finished this guy. But we're not. So um, I actually might, depending on what I'm doing today, because I, I got a bunch of things I'm doing today. But depending on what I'm doing today, I might actually try to finish this on my own. Or just this guy on my own. And then I'm going to be... Uh, uh, then I'm going to be uh, going to uh, tomorrow. We're going to do the other character here, the Emperor of Mankind. Tomorrow, over here. But let's see how much I could get done. I'm just going to take this black marker and and try to uh, see rough out in pen the rest of this part of the drawing here. Uh, let's see here. So, you know what we're going to do? It's it's uh, 740. I actually have to leave in five minutes. Five minutes I have to leave. So, guys, now's the time. Rapid fire. Let's go. You have any questions for me? Now's the time to ask before we end the stream today. Now's the time. Rapid fire. Whatever you want to ask me. Now's the time to ask in the chat. Go for it, my friends. Go for it. Okay, go for it. If you have a question, go for it. Uh, uh, Ed, Ed the Graham says, I want to draw, but I don't know what to draw. And how can I draw every day? You can draw every day by drawing every day. Uh, and that's one of the hardest things sometimes when you're starting, you don't know what to draw. You know, my buddy Jazz, I used to have that. Uh, I don't know. Does he still have it, guys? He has that art generator. He has that generator that actually gives you prompts on what to draw. It was actually pretty cool. It was, it was a pretty cool app. And I, I did that for a few of my videos when I was just starting out. But that might be something interesting to try for you, my friend. Like just having some pr art prompts. They're like, if you look online, if you look up for art prompts, they, they sometimes give you like keywords and stuff. And then hopefully that will give you some, uh, that can give you some, uh, what's it called? A start into what to draw. So, okay, next question here. Uh, Kurt Tone. Uh, actually, I missed one. Uh, Knuckle Sandwich, how do you potentially tell someone you don't want to see their bad art because they sh keep showing it and no one is impressed? Uh, look, you know, you want to be respectful. You absolutely want to be respectful to everybody, okay? Uh, when somebody shows you your art, you know how you want to stop them showing you your art? Don't tell them that your, their art sucks, but tell them how they can improve. You tell them what you feel is not right with it, but in a respectful way. Not like, oh, man, you know, I appreciate this, but your art's not very good, so uh, stop showing it to me. No, no, don't do that. But just say, look, uh, oh, that, that's cool, 
But to me, this kind of looks off. Or to me, there's a little issue like this. And two things are going to happen. Number one, they are, they're either going to be appreciative of what you say. Or number two, they're going to start arguing with you. And say, well, what do you know? And then they're going to stop showing you the art. So either way, it's a win-win. Either way, it's a win-win. Either they're going to, uh, you gave them an opportunity to improve, win. Or they're going to stop showing you your, their art, win. Win-win. That's the definition of win-win. There you go. Uh, let's see here. I should title this video that way, by the way. The definition of win-win. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Kurt Tone says, who's your favorite Spider-Man villain? Woo-hoo! Uh, well, in the movies, it's Doc Ock. He's great. Sandman. I, I actually like Sandman's portrayal in the movies also. I like Sandman's portrayal. But let's go. I'll go Doc Ock. There you go. The next question. Uh, Bob says, do you ever get a hand cramps when you get bored of drawing? No, but I have had hand cramps before, but it wasn't because I was bored of drawing. It was because I actually have hand cramps. I have carpal tunnel guys. So if I'm, if I'm like long, long time at the board, my hand hurts. Sometimes there are many times that I've fought through. There are many, many times I actually fought through to the carpal tunnel. So I could draw things because and that's how you know sometimes that you love doing something because I was willing to fight through the pain because I just love drawing, man. I love drawing and because I was trying to do something or trying to accomplish something with the art. So, yes, carpal tunnel happens and the pain happens. But depending on my doing, if I have the motivation or the right reason to keep drawing, I'm going to keep drawing. Oh, oh you know what? When, when I really had a, a hand cramp, when I, when I did the Infinity War mural, I had a massive hand cramp then. But I had no choice. I had to keep going because if I even missed a tiny bit of that schedule, I wouldn't have been able to deliver that piece on time. There was a time we had a power outage and I missed the morning and I totally messed up my schedule. I was so upset because there was a power outage and I couldn't draw. I couldn't draw because my lighting is set up in a certain way uh, for it to work. So, Okay, guys. Uh, I think I actually have to stop. Uh, it's 45. Yeah. I, yeah, I gotta go guys. I, I gotta go. All right, guys. Um, so let me just uh, answer these last one, a few ones a little bit better. Um, uh, Splam, which is an awesome name. Okay. Uh, would you do a budget starter kit video for someone who wants to try and get started again? Uh, you, are you talking about for YouTube? How would I start YouTube? Maybe, but uh, definitely not in the future, not uh, the immediate future. Uh, NBD Cheetah says, can you draw Brawl Star Marvel South tomorrow? Maybe not tomorrow. Tomorrow, no. Definitely not, no. We got to finish this. We're not done. Finish what you start, guys. Finish what you start. We got to finish this guy first. And then maybe we'll see, okay? But I'm thinking either Brawl Stars or we're going to do Clash of Clans. That's a good one. But I'm also thinking God of War. I'm also thinking um, Ninja Turtles. So there's a whole bunch I want to get to, but uh, maybe not right away. All right. Uh... Are you going to do Gremlins? That'd be fun, but not, not right now. Can you do Cobra Kai? Maybe not right now. I never watched an episode. I'll be honest. Never watched an episode. Uh, let's see here. Brody says, do you like monkey magic? Never never heard of it, my friend. Uh, let's see here. Your bad art is just obscure photo edits. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you could tell them that it doesn't look real. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Any more questions? No. Uh, this drawing's taking so long to draw. Well, it's the size, my friend. It's the size. To be honest, a comic book page takes eight hours to draw. For those of you who want to get into comics, an average comic book page that, if they're not Todd Knock, it takes eight hours to draw a comic book page. So if you think this is long, you're in it to a rude awakening if you're trying to get into comic books. You know, I, I'll be honest too. Uh, you know when Zach, uh, one of Zach's famous videos before he got he blew up. He did this video where it's like drawing for ten hours straight, drawing a piece for ten hours straight, and the comments in that video they're like, "Oh my gosh, ten hours!" And every comic book artist in the world laughs because we all draw for way longer than ten hours straight. Wait till you get to those twelve hours, eighteen hours, twenty-four hour marathons, my friend, for professional work, not for a YouTube video. Professional work. This is nothing. This is like. Yeah, so it's one of those things, my friend. 
one of those things. Be prepared for it because the artwork you're going to do as a professional artist, it's going to take way longer than this will. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Wait until you start working weeks on an artwork. You know, in uh, Marvel, uh, you know their concept art department? It takes them days, if not weeks, for every single concept. It takes them days, if not weeks. So wait for it, my friend. That's how it is. My friends, I love you all. Thank you for joining in on the stream. Make sure you, if you want to subscribe, sure. If you want to subscribe, sure. Let's make up for all the subscribers I lost. <laughs> and we are going to get back to trying to finish this tomorrow. You guys are the best. Give me a high five. High five, everyone. High five. High five. And thank you guys for watching. My name is James. I am the box office artist. I'm here to say keep drawing. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.